And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. It is that time once again to enter the Valley of the Judged. And with me on this journey, I have two of my good brothers and one who is... Once again, Leighton Gay. We have the bane of my existence, the man of a thousand runes, and the and the man who would pr who I will probably send a, a copy of DBZ Clue for Christmas. Good bro good brothers, Danatrix. And he seems to think that Clue is suffering. I don't think Clue is suffering. I just think DBZ Clue is suffering. It's innovation. Yeah, that, that's what people that's what people told me about Kingdom Hearts Talisman. Just saying. And Batman Talisman. Look, USA Apple USA Apple is the king of reskinning. <laughs> Any, anyways, in the on the other end on the other end of the table we ha we have the the man whose face launched a thousand airships, and the and the. Lord, the overlord of the lords of Brachus. Good brother <laughs> Ash. Hi. So, I've, I've this particular episode of Valley of the Judge in this in this series is one that I one that I feel like I I was going to have some fun with because, oh boy, are we getting to a very scub topic this week? Or. Or if you, or if you prefer a very borked topic, because um, well, let's talk about Rangers. <laughs> Fortunate, fortunately, not the ones in spandex. That comes later. And they're also not necessarily as borked as what Watsy did with Rangers. The on paper, the the uh, the approach with the approach with Rangers is. That they, is that they are first off patterned from a certain copyrighted hero from a certain copyrighted fantasy book that um, we do not want to piss off the estate thereof. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do your elf eyes see? Which actually had virtually no impact on the development of D&D whatsoever. Sorry, Tolkien fans. You're all wrong. I mean... But... Well, let, well, let's be let's be honest. If any, if if any, there would probably be half a there would probably be half a dozen people who would want who would want to who would want to sue, um, Gygax and Arneson for 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 character ripoffs. And I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of people who'd have the same kind of attitude with um, a lot of characters in early um, Warhammer Fantasy. Actually, I'd say Warhammer Fantasy is a, is far less subtle about it. Just like Blizzard was far less subtle about stealing from Warhammer. That actually did. Re that actually did start a lawsuit, one that got settled I know. in the court. But still, um, I know. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring bring up the fact that um, White Wolf had sued the makers of Underworld because they thought that th that the setup was a little bit too close to the mark. I think that one also got settled in the court. Yeah. But the the typical approach with rangers is that they're supposed to be very good in in certain types of environments, usually usually some usually some sort of dense Britishy forest, and specialize specialize in hunting a specific kind of target. Um, sometimes sometimes specific races. Um, which is which has led to the it led to the racist serial killer meme, um. <laughs> but the the now I now the big the big prop the big problem is that being being a na being a nature focused class with with some level of spell casting, which always was kind of weird to me, um. They end up getting out. They end up getting outperformed by Druidzilla, 
a, a lot of the times. Um, not so not so much nowadays because the druid has gone has gone off in a completely different direction over the years, but def but definitely definitely in some editions that was the case. Um, on the other hand, the person who can shoot arrows good is go is go is going to be outdone with the person who can turn into a giant bear and then shoot giant bears out of their eyes while farting lightning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not always a giant bear. Sometimes it was a T Rex. Let's not bring let's not bring up the un let's not bring up the undead T Rexes again unless unless um Jim Butcher gets mad at us. <laughs> Although truth be told, if we stole the undead T Rex, he probably he probably would would just be like, Go right ahead, because that's kinda who he is. <laughs> now Rangers could eventually could get a pet, but when you compare it to the to the fact that druids also could get a pet and get a whole lot more shit, you kind of see where this whole outclassing thing happened. Um, Felt like ranger was just a martial form of what the druid could achieve, and you get the whole linear fighters quadratic wizards problem all over yeah. again. Now. Druids did not make their debut until AD&D officially. Unofficially, the halfling in OD&D, for all intents and purposes, was a ranger. Um, just a, just a, and for even more intents and purposes, it was basically a, it was basically a sneakier fighter in contrast to the dwarf being a tankier fighter or the elf being a gishier fighter. There was a forester class. But nobody remembers that. <laughs> Much like a lot of the really obscure kits from around that time. Memory hold, because it just wasn't that interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but it was... Ba the Forester was basically a means to play a Gish without having to play a Elf. All yeah. Forester reminds me of is hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to deforest things we go. You know, the, the, sad, thi the sad thing is... Um, a long time ago, I a long time ago I was a part of a um, a ca a campaign that was taking a lot of cues from Fate Stay Night, and oh the servant that I we had to we had to literally draw our our servants at ra at random as far as the class that we had. Um, I ended up get I ended up getting Ryder, and. And people were like, okay. And some people were going, okay. Are you gonna pick Medusa or something? And I'm like, nope. Paul Bunyan. <laughs> uh, man, that ox could get you anywhere, real easy too. Mm -hmm. Paul Bunyan, and and because of because of, and I had, I had I was in a five minute long argument with my GM. About how, about how Babe the Blue Ox should count as a noble phantasm. <laughs> Let me guess, your GM was trying to argue that it was the axe. X, except Paul Bunyan's axe never really had a name. It, was it didn't just, have a name, it, and it was just kind of there. It was just an, it was just an axe. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. Every some somebody's servant shows up, and then Paul Bunyan shows up in it, and everybody feels a whole lot smaller. He immediately asked me, "Did you pick that just be, just because you just because you wanted to make everyone feel short?" I was like, "Why? I do that already as it is." <laughs> but you didn't deny it, so uh, I think the answer is still yes. <laughs> there was not a single person at that table who was. Who was over five foot six? I at, at the time I was six foot one. There you go. <laughs> um, Miltra, we should get to the ranger. Yes, we should. Yes, we should. We should get to the ranger. I've been, I've been, I've been sitting here waiting for my <laughs> my white whale. Well, I um, I do, I do need to set the stage with some of its with 
with some of the previous attempts because we've kind we've kind of done that the last few times when we've done classes. So, um, now in AD and D first and second, they um they were not able to fight properly in ch in chainmail or use shields. Which, if that sounds dumb, it ki it kind of is, and this prompted the running gag of Ranger down. And the at death's door survival rule because rangers were very, very, very squishy. I mean, the the big problem is that the is like much like with the much like with the bard in some in some of those old days and and some later, the bard was a it was a it was trying to do trying to do a jack of many trades in a game all about defined focuses. Um. Because the because it was basically what would happen if a fighter, a druid, and a thief had a um had a had a three way and and the ranger from AD and D was the result. The third edition, the third the three point ranger was also useless. For they a had, different reason, though. Yeah, they had some gimped ass spell casting, which again we've we've already discussed why why um half casters in in er, in um three in three point had problems. Um, this is where we first got favorite enemy, which was which was all about types and the basic parts of dual wielding for free. But the problem is, um, third edition dual wielding sucks. All of the ass, unless you choose to get improved monkey grip and dual wield two weapons, two sizes larger than you. The <laughs> I have never, I never, I never liked working with um, dual wielding in third edition because you're basically paying taxes to not suck. Whereas, whereas your sing, whereas your single weapon compatriots don't have this issue because you got you got penalties out the ass from the start, and you have and you basically have to buy those off or to at least let or at least lessen them. Um, and the f the the but the big problem is that if they weren't fighting favorite enemy, they were NPC class levels of bad. And all that favorite enemy gave I'm was just a here. plus one bonus. So so um if so again, the problem is other th other people were outclassing them. Three point five made them suck a little bit less. They gave them better armor and downgraded hit die to D8 instead of D10. Gave them a better reflex save and and so on. Favorite enemy sucked less. Had 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 um, uh, but the problem is it was a plus two progression instead of a plus one progression, so not that impressive. Um, animal companion was baked in, but operated at half power, so you're still getting outclassed by druids. Um, they. That's they also introduced the whole um, combat style thing, either archery or dual wielding, and getting fe and getting feats for that, but not feeder levels of feats. Then the feeder. <laughs> later on, the swift hunter feat would be introduced, which would ga give scout progression. Um, three point five ranger is t is tier four. Can do a little bit of everything, but not all that well. Um, Pathfinder boof boosted them a bit but they were but they were still only okay um the in the main cha the main change was that casting an animal companion progressed at level minus three instead of half level um they fi they fixed the whole fighting style thing so you didn't have to deal with prerequisites a bit so you'd have better options some archetypes let the ranger make and use traps, which is a little bit campaign specific. Um, but the problem is, once count, once the fists start flying, they're utterly useless. Um, and pa um, Pathfinder Second Edition did away with the whole casting thing, and focused on hunt prey as an action, basically their own version of hunters of the hunter's mark spell. Um, but oddly enough, they would end up getting their own version of focus spells in Advanced Player's Guide, which is weird. 
Then again, that, then again, that whole fo that whole spell slots and and separate focus spell points in pa in Pathfinder is a weird thing that we'll have to talk about another day. Fourth edition, surprisingly, they didn't suck. They Fourth were... edition was that game that basically focused on making everything have its own role in combat. They were sp they were strikers. So they were go so they were the they were the glass cannon DPS approaches that you're going to use to focus on the to focus on the beefier guys while while fighters were taking care of the swarmers. Um, Just like any ranged DPS. And that that was the complaint that some had that it was that it was just a that was just a ranged DPS except um the except the that whole except that that whole com, that whole complaint um it really really ends up really ends up falling falling flat when you can when you consider that that's kind of that's kind of what a ranger is, has always been kind kind of been um it did re though it did result in one of the most infamous um erratas because of or because of Kenshiro Orcus Slayer because one of the early daily powers that the rate that the ranger could get i think around paragon tier could allow him to continuously attack as long as he kept hitting you can <sighs> kind of see how this became a problem yep you oh, yeah. continuously oh. attack until you kill the thing you're hitting yes um now they they did have they did have there was eventually a spellcasting archer brought in as the seeker, which is a which is a pri which is a primal class, but and e and even w even with even with that, there there of course were um were some very were some simplified variants in the essentials books that I don't like talking about, um, mostly because I f I felt that essentials was the canary in the coal mine in terms of nostalgia bait. Um, but then we get to five E, and I th and this partic and it feels like we're we're back to square one of be of not being useless, but being outclassed by other classes. And since I've taken up the majority of this, Ash, I'll let you go into this because you've got a bit of history when it comes to the ranger. I do have a bit of history when it comes to the Ranger. The Ranger has gone through a number of di different iterations. It's by far drawn the most heavy criticism out of all of the D&D-based classes, and is one of the few things that 5th edition players will, at least, maybe not a majority, but a very strong portion of 5th edition players will look at and say, no, nah, it's not really up to the DM as to whether or not this class gets fixed or something like that. This is just this is just bad. And so it's gone through a number of different under Thurkana, it's gone through a number of different uh gone through a number of different expanded subclasses or additional under Thurkana releases or Tasha's, you know, Tasha's had the class improvement features or the class uh, replacements. It's the most reviled class in 5th edition by far, and is probably the biggest well to draw on when it comes to the toxicity of some of 5th edition's defenders. Especially, you especially notice it from people who were at the time prospective freelancers for WotC, and many of which actually went on to do some work for WotC. Mm -hmm. And maybe or maybe you're not did not uh, take some of my material for that, for their work on the Ranger, at least. But that's off to something else. It is a class that I focused on. It's the first class I played for 5th edition, which was, of course, my first tabletop role-playing game, and technically speaking, my first edition of D&D. And yeah, it's not been... It's gone through so many different... It is recognized as a problem, if not for the game as a cause of the game, right? If not for just being a bad class, it is recognized as being a problem for the community writ large. And its place in the game is this kind of lodestone for 
toxicity and vile and and just people getting shouted down and people not having good times and so it's become kind of the center of a discussion about sunk costs and whether or not you should go back and alter change underperforming content there's a lot of there are a lot of very deep and very important subjects when it comes to game design writ large and of course tabletop design especially that are all centered on the ranger which is Probably the worst thing for it. Nobody goes into the Ranger expecting it to be something good. At um, best, it's going to be something okay. Unless it is somebody playing an XP of a character whose name rhymes with Tyler Durden. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am no shill for R.A. Salvatore, but, uh, those are the only people I ever see enjoying Ranger anymore. <laughs> you know, I've got I, I've got, I've got the I've got his Demon Wars series on my um, on my audiobook queue. I'm pro I'm not going to be getting into it anytime soon, but it's but it's on the back end of uh, on the back end of my queue, and I I I remember re I remember reading that particular book and thinking that was better than the stuff he was doing with Driz. But the big now now um the vibe that I've seen and I and Zan you can you and um not Zan um Ash you can tell me if this is sim this has been similar to your experiences that the Ranger is not useless per se but a lot of its features are either very very specialized or are just out or just outdone by other classes. I would disagree with that heavily. That is the... Remember, I, I did warn you. I said all object level takes will be mercilessly attacked for this holy class, and I will follow up on that promise. Mm -hmm. The ranger does, in fact, have useless features, things which do not, which are not attached to any given system in the game, nothing that has an impact on the game. Uh, that is the problem with the ranger. It's not a matter of whether or not your DM uses your favorite enemy or uses your favorite terrain. What you discover is, uh, this is a shibboleth passed on by people who have played rangers, found it dissatisfactory, and sort of turned their gaze, turned their mind towards all the times in which they did not have access to their favorite enemy, or did not have access to their favorite terrain, and determined that was the cause of their dissatisfaction. When in reality, even if they do, if the, even if those situations for which your character is ostensibly better prepared do come up, you find that it has no impact on the game. Nothing changes when you use these characters. And that's why I call it useless. It is, it is not a matter of fact. It's not a matter of whether or not your DM uses these features or puts you in situations which are good for these features. It's that they're not attached to any real systems in the game. And so they just... They're wasted space, wasted words on your character sheet. All that comes of greater favored enemy is you get another language at the same time that your paladin friend gets to add his charisma bonus to not only all of his saving throws, but everybody within a 10-foot radius. Yeah. Um, That's who you're comparing, comparing yourself to. I do, however, think that... Um, maybe I'm in the minority on this, but I think um, Foe Slayer as a capstone ability sucks. Do people care about capstone abilities? I'm a holist, so I'm legally required to. Okay. But That's fine. And it, it, it does. Because you Something like that. The whole add your, add your whiz modifier to, to an attack roll or a, da or a damage roll against a favorite enemy. Something... That, is something that you would... Something that you would assume you'd get... Um, in the within the first ten levels, honestly. Is that it? Or, is that it? Let's go further. The first level, because I was about to chastise you and say perhaps we should focus on things that uh, only you, you know. Perhaps we should focus on the features that characters actually get to play with, which is somewhere in between first and uh, seventh level, with a little bit of an upper cap uh, distribution around what is it? Uh, probably a two-level standard distribution going either way. But, 
<laughs> I think you made an excellent point. Like, yeah, if it was still here, adding your uh, wisdom modifier to something, that would be, and very that would be an early level ability. That'd be great Fuck, for in, in some in in some other D twenty games. I know that is a first level ability that's usually tied to favorite enemy. Hell, um, exactly for L. That's not that's not too far removed from the whole um mar from the whole marking targets thing in um fourth edition. Right, which we know that the designers are not averse to. They're, I mean, most of the marks that were in 4th edition are gone from the game, but the few that have made it in are mostly centered around the Paladin, the Ranger, and the Fighter. Yeah. In fact, let me... Let me, gra let me grab that thing. Capstone ability is, what, level 18? 20. Oh, it's a 20? It's one of the few that's at 20. Oh. I'm trying to add up all the negatives. But I think the matrix, the the the, the waiting matrix that we were using earlier is uh, overloaded at this point. Ash, I'm I'm yeah, pretty sure. That I mean, it, but well, I'll give you I'll specificity, give you... lateness in 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 acquisition, um, all the restrictions, the fact that it's only your whiz mod, even at level twenty, your whiz mod is in fifth, barring taking some very specific feats, is never going to be higher than plus five. Especially yeah. since what if you're if you're going straight, um, if you're going straight ASI, like no 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 feats whatsoever, um, the highest it can go is the highest the actual ability score can go is twenty, which means your mod will ever only be plus five. That that and the fact that, um, unless you that um that unless you happen to have the luck of the gods when when rolling, which has happened sometimes, um. I would I would venture that most pe that most people who would be playing something like Ranger are going to be trying to dump all those all those ASI modifiers into decks, not in not into wisdom. <laughs> of of course of course the of course then we have the we have the issue of um of the mad problem which I've talked which I've talked about in the past and we'll probably end up talking about again in the future, but. Like let when it comes to and um first off first off I do I do want I do want to make clear the fact that the uh, even even back when I was playing A D and D I never quite un I never quite understood why the, why the ranger was giving was being given a gimped version of spellcasting um. Largely because, largely because it did, it didn't, it didn't seem, it didn't seem to really um, fit the way the ranger is presented. What do you mean, insofar as how it's presented? Um, because they got they got druid spells and magic user spells. I think that I think the I think the problem is is that is that when it came to the way it was the way it was written in the fluff there was never enough to really justify to me why why they had those why they had those spells or even um it's I I think the I think the the issue is that there is that um I'm trying to figure out how I can, how I can put how I can put this that doesn't that doesn't sound completely bonkers um <laughs> when I when when I learned when I learned that one of the big reasons why is the inspirations of the of the ranger I'm like okay but I'm not I'm not running this game in Middle Earth Okay, I see the problem now. So here's here's the thing. This is not actually the first instance in which Gygax did this because I no, disagree. He did this a lot. <laughs> I am well. No, no, that's not. No, here here's the thing. He is developing a gameplay archetype for the first time. The cleric is not actually, technically speaking, does not have a direct literary parallel. A heavily armed fighter who also can't spells. Does not have a uh, a holy heavily armed holy warrior who also casts spells and is like a primary mag magic user. Uh, does not actually have much of a direct literary parallel. 
it is a gameplay... I, I used to use the term concession, but now I d decide Gary was developing a new arc for this game. And ditto for the Ranger. The Ranger is a is a fighter who draws upon the power of the forest in a very literal sense in order to empower themselves, make themselves better at fighting, making themselves more proficient martial characters. And also takes advantage of this when it comes to a variety of exploration-focused activities. This is a this is a new archetype which is draws loosely from some earlier uh, from some earlier literary archetypes, but like it, Tolkien was barely influential whatsoever on AD and D to begin with, like virtually no influence. The elves. No. Elves elves predate Tolkien by a lot. And Gygax was a much bigger fan, more importantly, because that, that on its own is important. More importantly, Gygax was a much bigger fan of Lord Dunsany, who is the predecessor of Tolkien, and who Tolkien is largely derivative of. The King of Elfland's daughter had a much bigger impact on how Tolkien thought of these beings, these fey creatures who looked like humanity, but were quite different indeed. That's it. That's a rabbit hole. I don't. I don't feel like going down because it's not a rabbit hole. It's incontrovertible based on Gary's statements and all the evidence of the game. People can read Appendix N by I'm Jeffrey saying, Johnson if they want more info. What I'm saying is rails. Rails, right? <laughs> Most importantly, but that was relevant to the to the thing, which is Tolkien did not have that much of an influence on the game. So when we're looking at these different literary sources, the ranger that we're looking at from from the game's beginning, is not to be paralleled with those literary sources. They are vague inspirations, vague templates for Gary to build on and create his own gameplay archetype. And there's precedence for him doing this in the form of the cleric, is what I'm saying. So I think, I think certainly on that metric, Rangers having access to magic and having a Preferably a specialized version of magic, though that's not always been in the game, um, is is quite suitable. Anyway, a specialized. For it's interesting you bring up the whole specialized form of magic because a a big a big issue has been the um, the fact that it's the fact that it's dipping into the same relative toe as the as the druid. Thus, thus you have the issue of. You're just be, you're just do you're casting the things that a druid would, but but much but much more slowly. The whole the whole getting out the whole um getting out getting out getting um outclassed um and I'm not I'm not going to specifically sl slam the um ranger for this because this is a problem that happens with a lot of the half casters and a lot of the gish characters um. But the but um the but like like I said, this is a cl this is a class that's got that's gotten re that's gotten reworked many many times and um and the and the and there's been like when I look in my, when I look in my notes I find I find three <laughs> three different revisions of the of the ranger the. Am the ambuscade from Unearthed Arcana, the re the revised from Unearthed Arcana, the Ranger revised, and the spell list from the modifying classes Unearthed Arcana. And now, when it now when it comes to now when it came to the. Uh, now, um, before we before we get into the level up version, what would Ash? What was your take on the official attempts to do to do um revised versions of the of the Ranger? They were actually headed in the right direction. They took out resource stupid resource penalties and revised certain abilities, which were sucking resources out of the Ranger, and for very little benefit, they decided that those. We're going to use separate re resource pools 
like uh, Primeval Awareness used to cost a spell slot. And the only information that you got was something of the given animal type, or sorry, um, creature type is within a one mile radius. Or a five mile radius if it's your favorite enemy. What this meant was, you get to know if your favorite enemy is dragons, you don't get to know if it's within a one mile radius of you, you get to know if it's within a five mile radius of you, and you're down a spell slot. The, the ability actually got, technically speaking, worse. If, because you got no other information. You didn't get number, not even a vague idea of number. You didn't get a direction. It was, it was horrific. It was so stupid. I was amazed that it made it into the book, at least when I was first playing D&D. Now I have something of a more cynical approach to everything Watsy puts out, but that's the story for today, or an ongoing tale for whenever I'm near a microphone. The... So those features were transformed into abilities like, by the same name, Primeval Awareness, was, which was based on a different resource timer. I believe either a short or long rest, or it might have been your Wisdom Modifier. I think it was your Wisdom Modifier. And it would tell you, give you a whole bunch of details like direction, or they might have called it heading, which is basically the same thing. Uh, vague number. Or sorry, no, the, they actually gave you exact numbers. We abstracted that out in our in our games to be like all right like under 10 tens hundreds thousands etc and you would get a number attached to that so if there was like you, you wouldn't get to know 683 but you would get to know between 600 and 700 which is where some of the issues came up where it's like some of these features are actually a little bit too precise and so far to the extent that they could cause friction at the table needlessly and a little bit of a little bit of editing can fix that. Oh. Introduce a little bit of ambiguity into those abilities, but by and large, that was my I mean take what I just said about primeval awareness, you can abstract that out to just about everything else in the class where it was heading in the right direction by and large. They still suffered a little bit when it came to uh later stage abilities where they're bunch of things that were like here's different variations on how to hide it's like this stuff needs to not be a class feature mm -hmm. this needs to be replaced with something important hopefully something thematic which is what i later did when i did my rebuilt ranger which was basically used the revised ranger as a template so i thought it, there, there's my review in a nutshell it was sufficient to use as a template to go on to do something better which watsi did not because they walked those changes back yeah the there, there seem to be a whole lot of one step forward, two steps back with with all the different, um, all the different updates, and of course, the um, now, suppo supposedly, supposedly there was a there was an announcement like th there was an announcement like three years like three years ago where Cro where Crawford said that if he that if people didn't like the ranger, they should just play a different class, which was the probably the most tone. If that's if that's really what he said, that is extremely tone deaf. <laughs> what did he say? Um, no. Was, did you say that again? <laughs> apparently, apparently, in a comment in a comment on on Twitter back in July of 2018, Crawford had announced that the ranger would not be getting a revision, not even a fish, an official printing of of. A uh, so, of of a UA cl of the of the um, revised. I remember that he was he was shooting down the the revised ranger mm -hmm. and and suggested that if you didn't like it, you should just play a different class. That's where the community management element of the ranger's toxicity and problems for gaming writ large mm -hmm. come into the fray. Yeah. Now. Um, Lari now, Lar as as some of you know, Larian Studios is handling um, adapting Five E for Baldur's Gate three, and they de they decided that they're going to do some beefing up when it comes to the when it comes to the Ranger themselves, um, largely because Larian Studios are not run by idiots. Um, you should hope they're not. <laughs> yeah, and ap apparently the. Apparently, they are. They there is talk of of making some of those changes. Um, uh, get 
some getting some of those changes to be back adapted into the into the tabletop game proper. Although Merles is still trying to play damage control. Merles is not trying to play damage control. Hey, stop the shitting on Merles. He's the one who went out. Merles went out of his way during the Mike Merles Happy Fun Hour to try to address people and empathize with people who who wanted a good experience when it came to the range. If anybody's responsible for the for the issues in fifth edition, I'm gonna put that blame on Crawford and his sort of side of the development team. But Merle's actually came out and said, Hey, I don't care if the numbers match up. I want to figure out why people are having a dissatisfying experience. And I want them to not have a dissatisfying experience when playing the Ranger. All credit to Merle's. Oh, all right. But I defend my inspiration. But that brings us to the to the level up version. And the first thing that I find interesting is this version dropped the this version dropped the spell casting. Um for the most part. Instead instead of doing spell casting, it integrated the maneuver system. Um which I'm perfectly fine with. And also I'll let I had to make okay, so I thought I'm still I'm so used to Rangers having a D having a D eight hit die. <laughs> I I I ended up I ended up making that assumption, but that's not the case. Um, but when it comes now, of course, um, the Ranger is going is going to have its own fair of exploration next, which we'll get to later. Um, and let's see, we and we have um, we do have the take on fam on familiar terrain, which I don't remember getting. I think I think that was available at cer at certain levels with the core ranger, but it wasn't available at the start. What was? Um, the um, sorry, favorite terrain. Yeah, favorite terrain. I believe you get a first level. There's also a natural explorer feature, which I think gives you. Those are there. There's a mess of abilities that are tied up. Yeah. And the pro, the problem is the problem is there's na there's natural explorer and then there's um depth ex then there was depth explorer in the class feature variants. Yeah, I I I saw that. There's a number. And then then there was another depth explorer explorer in ta in Tasha's. Yes. Um. But I think I think in this I think in th I think in this in th in this regard um, I do I do I do appreciate that they're not ha that they're not having people pick what kind of environments you're um, you're you're effectively specialized in with something like familiar terrain um. Because yeah, that that was the case in Natural Explorer. You had to choose one type of favored terrain, and in this in this particular case, you uh, you don't. Well, let's let's move into that. We should probably, based on the fact that most of the most of the changes between version one and version two appear to have been typos by and large, mm -hmm. we should probably. Are we moving into the evaluation? Yeah. All right, so let's look at familiar terrain. At first level, you are particularly adept at traveling and surviving in natural environments. When you make an intelligence or wisdom check related to any natural terrain, blah, 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 they give examples, you get an expertise die if you're using a skill you're proficient in. While traveling for an hour or more in these terrains, you get the gain the following benefits. Difficult terrain doesn't slow your group's travel. It's basically the, the list of uh, shit that you get in 5th edition. Yeah. It's 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 literally all that stuff. Get some tracking bonuses. Get some foraging bonuses. You're not uh, unalert. You you remain alert alert to danger when you're using uh when you're engaged in other activities. Can't become lost by ma except by magical means, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's mm -hmm. it's the same. They just removed any kind of special. They removed any kind of uh, terrain specialization, which is why I go back to my earlier point of un unless. Level up has a 
very robust exploration pillar, which we've gone over beforehand. Some of them are more... It doesn't look like they have a pillar. They just have some exploration-focused abilities, which are cool, out of a larger lack thereof. We'll, we'll see. I'm, hold, I'm withholding judgment until they put out a document on it, but most of this stuff is probably still not going to come into play unless they have a robust exploration pillar. It's still going to suck. They just got rid of the specifics. I'd say... Um... Let's see. Then, oh, then, the, then after that is um, studied adversary, which is for the, which is t is taking some of its cues from favorite enemy. Although, um, although it looks it looks like there's um, there's alternated there's um, some other advantages with it. Because we should go over some of the other features before we. Oh no, no, no! Studied adversary is before. See, I was looking for favorite enemy, so I I completely skipped over studied adversary. And let's see. So you do in both cases, you do get advantage on on um sur on survival checks when it comes to tr when it comes to tr when it comes to tracking. Um and in and um and on ability checks to recall info on them. The ab the ability to the let's. See. Although, unless I'm mistaken, the ability to communicate with basic words in a language that's spoken by a, stu by a studied adversary is not in core. Something something else I don't something else I don't see in core is that during a long rest you can you can replace that studied adversary, which um, definitely makes definitely makes something like favorite enemy suck less. Uh, I don't know, I'm looking, I'm looking at this, this is basically, this is basically core. This is basically core. There are some modifications that happen later on, but this is basically core. Uh, you gain no real tangible benefits for the core gameplay loop. You gain advantage on checks, which are trivially easy to acquire. And there's a fun note here, which I want you guys to keep in the back of your mind. Mildred and Zan, you guys got to keep this in the back of your mind, as well as all of our dear listeners. Uh, notice how few times the phrases minor advantage and minor disadvantage come up in this document. I don't think they come up. I, in fact, they might not come up at all, except uh, I haven't checked all the maneuvers. But minor advantage and minor disadvantage don't appear to make an appearance here. Um, Interesting. Let's see, then then um, there's the whole thing with combat maneuvers, which I think for the most part are going to work this, are going to work the same way as the other times we've seen combat maneuvers int introduced. Um, obviously, obviously, they, obviously they have a more specific setup, whereas the, whereas the um, fighter is going to have the big is going to have the biggest potential pool of um, maneuvers that they can pick from. Um, but I'm I'm sa I'm saving the the ones that they have access to are biting zephyr, mist and shade, razor's edge, spirited steed, and unending wheel. Um, let's see then stride and seek, which. Um, I'm not, should I be, should I, should I be angry or shake my head at that, at that, um, little bit of word play? Oh, I think it's, I think it's fine. I'm delighted by designers having, I'm always delighted when I see, when I can imagine designers smiling and stuff like that. I can imagine one designer smiling and another one groaning at the same time. Provided they intend the, the player to smile with them and stuff like that. There are exceptions. Yeah. Um. So, the two options you have are hunt, are hunter's target and swift feet. Um, 
Hunter's tar Hunter's target is the t is the um is the mar is the marking approach and swift feet seems to seems to be for those who want to for those who want to um move up move about I'll move about we, we should note that stride and seek you gain and sorry if you already mentioned this you gain one of the following features at second level but the other feature you get when you reach fifth which is both cool and that like hey you're gonna get both of these things mm -hmm. eventually at some point just choose which is more more necessary for you right now Exactly, which is both great multi-classing fodder and great single-class progression fodder. What a fantastic mechanic. Good on the designers here. Mm -hmm. I am... I guess if I was designing, like, it, I'm thinking about future-proofing, of course, because that's that's a big thing that people don't do in their TRPGs, is that, like, oh, well, what if I want to introduce a new Stride and Seek option later down the line? I'm, I'm probably going to have to use something... I, I guess I could mention something like, hey, this replaces specifically Hunter's target. Because I only want to, because I don't want my future ability and Hunter's target to be able to to be on the same character sheet. I want them to have to choose between these things. But it's okay if somebody has this future ability and swift feet. So I'll say, yeah, I guess I, that's not too much of a problem. Not too much of an issue with future proofing. And I guess they could use it to their advantage if that was their intention. Um, I'd like to hope that hunt that hunter's target has a has a bit of scaling, because um, one d one d six isn't going to be all that impressive once you hit the teens, but obviously the obviously these um these sheets aren't covering the teens, so that's no. Huge. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with that, man. Hunter's hunter's mark is fantastic once you get higher in level. It only ever. It scales off of other features that you're making use of, like multi-attack. Um, and with the different uh, with the different maneuvers that you have access to as a ranger, I'm most impressed that they intuited, like, hey, this is a class feature. That Mike Merle said, and I followed up on, or had already developed, actually, in my rebuilt ranger, and which was then, at some point, adapted by a certain somebody into their one of their unearthed arcanas. I'm not going to mention their name. Uh, <laughs> is um, that Hunter's Mark reads like a class feature, and it's sort of like this auto pick among rangers. Mm -hmm. And the point at which a spell is is an auto pick, and it reads like a class feature. That's sort of, and it's on like this resource timer. Um, that's the point at which you just make it a class feature. So good on these designers because most of this mo most of this document is either yellow or red at this point i am by and large not terribly impressed but there are a few key points on which clearly these designers are paying attention at the very least to a few core issues yeah. um now train I'm guessing, go ahead i was gonna say i'm guessing that most of the yellow and red that they have in this document though is because they're still working with the base of 5e's ranger uh yeah yeah, by and large. They one or two exceptions, but yeah, basically the places where they did not deviate enough. Yeah, and I think I think I think at that point it might partly be them trying to play it a little safe to to keep this in line with what Watsi has already produced. Um maybe after the playtest the the uh feedback that they got about Ranger is much the same as what you're saying, Ash, and w w when they put out a more complete document uh, we'll see radical changes, right? Because I feel, because I, I feel like some of the other classes had pretty substantial departures from they the tradition. They do, like fighters. Um, yeah, fighter stores, all the ones that we've covered. Certainly, um, uh, I'd like to. I'd like to see them. I feel like if you're going to do that with any class, this this, this is should be your go to. Um, now trained accuracy. On paper, I on paper I don't mind the i the idea. I do th I do think it's a I do think it's they um, overcomplicate how they how they wrote it a little bit. But the big problem that I have is a is a prob is a bit of an issue I've I've had with I've had with some other classes of having of having people balance multiple pools because 
you have because you have the you have the charges when it comes to when it comes to a when it comes to um accuracy bonus from trained accuracy and you have the exertion pool from combat maneuvers Mm. I'm, I'm, yeah. I can huh. see I can see where the where the issue could arise. Few too many. That's that's understandable. Question. Okay. This I want both of your feedbacks on this because there are two features that follow trained accuracy, right? Yeah. Maintain a level of discipline, blah 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 blah. And there are two um like header three style uh style features following it uh which are accuracy bonus and accuracy reserve right mm -hmm. so accuracy bonus you get the weapon attack reaction blah 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 blah, blah. um and then you have the accuracy reserve which is if you haven't moved since the beginning of your last turn you get a plus one bonus to weapon attack rolls on that turn are you supposed to get both of these with trained accuracy or do you think that they accidentally no, I think you. I think you're supposed to get both. I'm okay. Yeah, tra trained accuracy. All it says is, you learn to maintain a level of discipline that spills over into everything you do. This perpetual state of focus allows you to perform incredible feats. Right. It doesn't say that you get to choose one or the other. Yeah, it doesn't tell you to make a choice like some other uh, ones of these. So I, I was sort of I, expecting that though. Do you, do you see what I mean there? Since that you get those two head or three mm -hmm. abilities following there. Yeah, and, and usually in most cases, what we would see is, you know, choose one of the following. Right. I mean, it, it, even even just uh, with Stride and Seek, it even says you gain one of the following features and then the other at, at fifth. Or uh, if we go further down, um, Wilderness Mystique, choose one of the following. Um because that phrasing is very specific, since it is not included in trained accuracy, it's more conspicuous by its absence. And I would rule that you get both. Yeah. That's That said, accuracy reserve comes off to me like a third edition feat. <laughs> <laughs> you mean where you're paying not to suck? The... It's not the idea. The idea of it isn't terrible, and I could and I could see it being fairly useful for um, for um, ranged builds. But at this, so we're never gonna have that happen. Yeah. But it's a, but it's a case of um, how much is it's a case of one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how useful it is, and two. Um, it kind of gets outclassed by the uh, by the accuracy bonus mechanic. Yeah, that is one thing. Is that like I mean, most ranger spells are giving you stuff to do other than damage, right? Mm -hmm. And like, but oftentimes you don't get that. Like they they give you extra damage, and then they give you some other bonus mechanic. Mm -hmm. Um, ensnaring strike allows you to hit somebody and they get restrained by thorns that pop up. You guys, you guys get the idea, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, and you often don't get to use that because you're concentrating on Hunter's Mark. Now they changed it so the Hunter's Mark wasn't a spell here, but, um, they're replacing the spells that you might get otherwise with these other martial features, which is, I mean, I'm sort of, I want spellcasting to work with rangers. That's my conception of a ranger. Theoretically speaking, a ranger art. Here's the problem. Some ranger, let's read the text here. Spells and rangers. Some ranger archetypes can grant spells. If you're using a ranger archetype that grants spells, you learn to innately cast those spells once between long rests using material components found in nature, blah, blah, blah. The spells that you cast in this way are always cast using the lowest spell level. Wisdom is your spell casting ability. When you reach ninth level, you gain a second use of your first level spells, and when you reach 17th level in this class, you gain a second use of your second level ranger spell between long rest. Now, I don't know if that's going to come with a 
ranger spell table and an actual spell progression beyond what's come in this little block here. I'm not sure if I like either of those. Um, I don't know. It, it seems like they're... I'm looking at the future-proofing of this. It kind of looks like they're sh shutting out most spellcasting for rangers. So if I wanted to have a spell like... Some rangers are more exploration focused, some archetypes are more combat focused or martial focused, and they have different martial focuses within that sub subtype. Uh, you know, I'm the dual I'm the I'm the person who is specialized to fight in the underdark, or that's where my technique what well, my techniques are inspired by. I'm a hunter, I'm a beastmaster, blah blah blah. These these are different thematic archetypes. If I wanted to include one that was focused on magic. Like, I'm a martial person who's a little bit more familiar with nature magic as opposed to arcane magic. Um, I It kind of feels like this is shutting out the possibility for that. And this is... This was the wrong place, I feel, to... I Again, I haven't seen the final iteration. Maybe they have a spell casting progression that goes with the class even with... Alongside of, you get these free once per long rest or twice per long rest spells. But, I don't know. I don't know. This this was the wrong place to deviate from the base. Oh, all right. The uh, but more. We'll get more into that once we get to the once we get to subclasses. I'm sure. Let's see, then then archetype is mentioned and ASI is mentioned. Then we get to wilderness mystique at fourth at fourth level, which I'd say is one is our first stump is our first batch of the of the um um of the feature pattern that we've seen with a lot of the classes um so we so we have answering silence um fe um feature fearsome mysticism and kindred spirit and of the th of the three of, of the three of these I'd say I'd say the one that's probably going to get used the least is Kindred Spirit. Actually, no. Actually, no. What I take I take that back. Um, I think the one that's going to get used the going to get used the most is Answering Silence. Fearsome Mysticism and Kindred Spirit are um are are kind of on the specific end of thing end of things in different ways. Yeah, but they both have a lot of flavor to them. Yeah, and there's a mechanical hook involved in the, especially in the flavor for for kindred spirit. Yeah, they're they're not ba they're not bad. It's it's more of it's more of whether or not those avenues are go are going to get are going to get used by a t by a table, and that's something obviously I can't predict. Um, yeah. And they're on that weird spectrum. This is where a lot of my yellow marks came from previous. In previous discussions about, hey, when you're inventing social skills and social abilities, make the number higher for a skill role or for a social skill role is better off not done. If you can't invent a specific effect or specific and or specific consequence for failure when it comes to invoking this ability, it's better off not used. I fear it's better off not taking a slot. So answering silence is, among other things, a little weird. Uh, when a friendly creature makes a nature survival check within five feet of you against an expertise die. Uh, fearsome mysticism. Your uncanny abilities and single-minded focus can be unnerving to the uninitiated. You gain an expertise die on intimidation checks against any creature that is neither proficient in arcana nor cast spells. That one, like... That one in particular, we'll, we'll get back to that one because I feel like that's the biggest missed opportunity. Kindred spirit, you intuitively sense when another wilderness expert is nearby. Your passive perception increases by five to detect hidden or invisible creatures within 30 feet of you, and you instantly detect whether any creature you can see is proficient with stealth or survival. So there's a few different. Um... I, before you get into that, I want I wanted to, I wanted to you first something. you first something with kindred spirit the whole being able to detect when a creature is is proficient with stealth or survival i look at that and i go um so like it's just, it's just 
that kind of knowledge is just kind of there. Mm hmm. Let's, shall I give you an alternative for kindred spirit? Um, I'm gonna, um, if I, if I may hazard a guess, does one of, is part of it include not being able to be surprised? No, no, not in the slightest, actually. So, kindred spirit, if I were going to do a redo of this, because it's mostly focusing on intuitively sense when another wilderness expert is nearby. I actually interpret this, and this was the focus of the rebuilt ranger, was focusing on how a ranger is sort of the wilderness analog for the rogue, rather than the fighter. This is your skill monkey. You're, this is your person who takes, like, maybe rogue features, or things that you could see being akin to rogue features, mm -hmm. and granting them to the whole party, because they are these people who are skilled in guerrilla warfare and stuff like that, and they can do stuff on their own, but when they have, they're best used as a force multiplier. If you attach a ranger to a unit of fighters, you're going to be do great. If you attach a ranger to a unit, if you have a whole unit of rangers, they're going to make, they're going to be so ridiculously effective that they're unstuck. They're able to take on foes way beyond their individual means. So if I were doing kindred spirit, let's look at the flavor text for this. You intuitively sense when another wilderness expert is nearby. It's called kindred spirit. I would adjust this to the idea that you're... I'm not sure exactly how I would phrase this being line with 5th edition, but you would be able to sense, in out-of-game out terms, communicate between your party members, even without speaking during the first round of combat or before a surprise round, even if you were in darkness or... um or had some kind of, like, sensory obfuscation so that you couldn't see or hear one another, you would just sort of intuit what the other person would do. And this benefit would extend to anybody with proficiency in stealth or survival. So the barbarian, the ranger, and the rogues stealth up. Uh, they walk into a darkness spell, and they are able... They are still able to... Their players are still able to communicate with each other, and their characters are able to act as if they were communicating with each other. The idea being that... They all kind of know what the other's going to be doing, how they're going to be, how they're going to be acting. So it's this bonus that's provided to the party. It doesn't, it doesn't surpass, it doesn't make the darkness moot necessarily, because there's still all the other uh, penalties for sensory deprivation, like depriving you of sight. But it allows you to still cooperate with your teammates in that in that situation. That's what I think of when I think of. Uh, kindred spirit. What do, what do you think about that? Too much? Too little? Um, I think you, I think if you were able to shrink that, if you're able to shrink that down to a paragraph and a half, that'd that'd be fine. But obvious. Yeah. But that's that's as far that's as far as I that's as far as it goes for me. Um, I de I do see where you're coming from though. I probably could. You're able to know the thoughts and actions of your allies. Um, even in thoughts and actions, and they're able to communicate with your allies, even if you're otherwise sensory deprived, even if you otherwise wouldn't be able to, provided they have proficiency in the stealth or survival s skills. Mm -hmm. That would be my, that'd probably take about two or three lines. Yeah. I might introduce the range limit. That might give another. You get the idea. Yeah. Now, I'm skipping. I'm skipping extra attack because there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, it, is, <laughs> it is. It is nice to see that to see that back in because I think there. I think there was some. I think there had been some debate about whether about whether or not um, rangers should get extra attack. I feel. I feel that they should, especially since one of the one of the more popular ranger builds is dual wielding. Unearthed, Ar I, I can give you a little bit of insight to that. Unearthed Arcana gave you a, gave you the first like revised Ranger edition. Set was what introduced the different Ranger conclaves, mm -hmm. and the idea was that some conclaves had access to extra attack, but some didn't have access to extra attack. Instead of extra attack, there would be some kind of combination attack feature that would focus on, for instance, the Beastmaster. So instead of worrying, instead of the designers worrying about whether or not you would have two attacks of your own and your beast would attack, or making you too restricted so that you would only have 
one attack unless your beast uh, and you had to choose whether or not your beast was going to attack or you were going to attack and you couldn't really split these up in the way that you wanted to they were just able to say nope anytime that you attack your beast attacks and that's your that's your fifth level feature um and it, it basically allowed them this new mechanical space to explore but people didn't like that or people ostensibly didn't like that. I actually suspect it was killed, which would not be the first time that WotC has done something that they decide they really didn't want to introduce to the game. But, uh, but yeah. Um, personally, I, th I think... Which is the only reason I comment on it here, because yeah. I thought that the level-up playtesters might actually explore that mechanic further. I guess they decide not to. I don't really... I don't blame them. Just, you that, know. Uh, that and... That and the Conclave thing might, um, might be... Might be might be might be double or triple dipping when when they're already into when they're already bringing in the maneuver system into this. Well, conclaves were just our types. Yeah, and we've um. Now, There's, they're just subclasses, and yeah. we're gonna, of course, we're gonna have a subclass hour. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Then adversarial focus. Not a whole lot to talk about there. Because. <laughs> You're just you're just getting an you're just getting another type of another type of favorite enemy. So, um, let's see game hunting. I'm trying I'm trying to think if I I do not think that something like game hunting was in core, or if it was or if it was it it was in a ver it was in a variant. Um, being able to locate and catch game animals, get proficiency with nets and being within um, five feet of a hostile creature doesn't impose disadvantage on ranged attacks with a net, along with using a bo bonus attack to attack with a net that you're holding. Um, this is it's one. This is one. This is one of those things that I could. S I I find I find kind of interesting on a on a narrative end of things because. Um, because it go it goes into the into the general theme of what a hunter is supposed to be doing, you know they're supposed they're supposed to be good tra trackers, trappers, and the like. So it certainly fits. Oh, no. <laughs> talk talk about lousy talk about lousy timing. Did he wander off? He's he said he, he said he's gonna be he said he's gonna be back in two minutes. So I'll have to I will have to hold back on that. Um and, he, said, he wandered um, off. Um It's funny it's funny that we talked about multi class fodder earlier when at eighth level they get versatile exploration, which you can either take a ranger exploration neck or can choose one from the druid or the fighter. I really, I thought that was cool as shit. Big, big, big. I mean, I granted, I actually did mark it in yellow, but on on second thought, like I think it, um, I think it's cool as shit. It deserves the. Yep. Um, I didn't. Um, what was your take on game? hunting? Cause you game hunting? Of, you kinda, game hunting? Because you game hunting. You kind of you kind of wandered off right as I was talking about it. Mhm. Mm uh, tell tell me, uh, are these up on the screen for the listeners slash viewers? No, because whenever I try and do that, I have technical problems. Oh, that's unfortunate. The first one, actually, the the first video that you did uh, regarding the with that format actually turned out really well. But technology being what it is, we can't help ourselves. Versatile exploration. So, oops. And to read it out for folks, I actually did mark this one in yellow. Uh, at 6th level, you gain advantage on any check made to locate or catch game animals in the wild. Additionally, you gain proficiency with nets, and being within 5 feet of a hostile creature doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged attack rolls with a net. When you use the attack action, attack with a one-handed weapon, which I believe includes nets, you can use a bonus action to attack with a net that you are holding. So it definitely does include, so it definitely does include nets. I shouldn't have... Uh, I shouldn't have editorialized, or I should have waited to editorialize for another uh, twelve words there. Mm -hmm. 
But it I just actually, means you could dual wield nets and use one as their main action and the other as your bonus. Which I'm totally fine. That's actually pretty cool. Giving giving rangers a little bit. That's a kind of specialization because like nets are a they're a weapon, they're an equipment option, technically speaking, but like a net is something that you use to uh to restrain people. <laughs> and you get advantage on them and stuff like that. Nets are super useful, man. You don't see them a lot in. Uh, I don't see a lot of people using them in fifth edition. But I, everybody, when I ever when I bust out the net in any of my many ranger characters, uh, people all of a sudden go, "What? <laughs> it's great. Um, it's great." And giving rangers a specialization there, pretty cool. I will freely admit that whenever someone pulls word association with me when it comes to nets in combat. I always end up thinking of gladiators. Yep. Can't help it. <laughs> Can't help it. That one guy with the net and the trident. I, I saw that movie about uh, 15 years ago or something like that. And uh, however long it was, I just, I just remember the uh, guy with the net and the trident. My introduction to, to um, the various types of gladiators was not that movie, actually. It was a long time before that. I was in middle school. It was it was reading that it was reading a it was reading this picture book called the Ro called the Roman News, um. <laughs> and look it, look that was that was my introduction to de to delving into to delving into antiquity because because I came across that particular book when I was in um when I, when I was still in grade school, um. Now. The now um when it comes to flash when it comes to flash of steel, um something I do something I do find funny is that one of the potential um maneuvers you can get is whirlwind strike because how many times have I bitched about third edition whirlwind? <sighs> um, yes, but it's ba it's basically a it's basically a free maneuver, um. You also you also get um, hunter's focus, which lets you focus on your hunter's target for up to eight hours. Let me see what the, no the wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> Hold on, give me a moment, folks. Wait, wait. It lets you do it at eight hour. Hold on. <laughs> uh this might be my this might be my in to that design. This is you know. I Hold can't on. remember the theme. Okay, so I I, <laughs> I, I want to say, um, going back Before. to the whole introduction to gladiators thing for a second, um, you reminded me of those... I don't remember if they were Scholastic or another brand, but they were always uh, thinner hard, hardcover books that were like almost full 8 by, uh, 8 by 11 or even larger sized with where the cover was mostly white. And I was like... Uh, different little like this is in primer into specific thing on the title, like primer into rhyme into into Roman uh, history and all those. I can't remember the name of this books. I am going batshit right now. Right, that was a that was a that was a format for the for how they would brand it basically, right? Yeah. Um. But yeah. I so here's here's the thing I found. <laughs> okay, so remember how I told you I did that rebuilt ranger a while ago? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to read you out Hunter's Mark from the rebuilt ranger by Mr. James Strangsham. Beginning at third level, you can magically mark a creature within 60 feet of you as your primary target for one hour. While marked in this way, you always know the creature's general direction from you. Each time you hit the creature with a weapon attack, you deal an additional 1d6 damage. The effect fades if you are incapacitated. If a marked creature dies, you could use a bonus action on your subsequent turns to move the mark. You can't use this feature again until you complete a short or long rest. When you reach ninth level, the duration increases to 8 hours. So that was fun. <laughs> reading that reading that other one, which uh, you may have noticed is... <laughs> what do they call it here? Hunter's Focus. Clashers. Hunter's focus there. Mm -hmm. You remain focused on your hunter's target for after eight hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I, you know, 
I don't know if they saw my thing or just great minds think. Like, that was one thing. Like I, I am averse to saying people, certain people stole things when it comes to RPGs because like there's a there's a number of first ideas that everybody is going to come to. Like if I ask you, if I ask the two of you, uh, give me three uses for a brick, the chances that the first three ideas that you guys come up with are going to fall under in some capacity obstruction device murder weapon or burglary tool is basically a hundred percent right it's uh, that's that's those are just the low creative fluency options that everybody comes up with at first because you say give me uh, give me a use for this tool and i for this object for the following object and i say break and the first thing that comes to your mind is uh smash through a window dust explosion was the first thing that came to my mind which is which is rare like i could do pumice for smoothing out a handle or sorry for roughing up a handle Mm -hmm. but the reason dust explosion was the first thing that came to mind there is because when i think bricks i think uh grind wheels and i have a really weird train of thought stop judging right well that's (laughs) no that's that's a high fluency creative output and stuff like that which is where the a lot of the meat in rpgs comes today like me turning Hunter's Mark into a into a class feature as opposed to a spell was technically speaking, it wasn't low creative fluency because uh, very rarely a lot of what we do in RPGs is, in, is hardly low creative output. But among compared to other RPG creators, um, the the general evaluative strategy for determining whether or not something was a creative solution is somewhat hampered. There, there's a handicap on everything because of who you're comparing it to. It, what I'm trying to say is, I don't think they stole this from it. I think they just figured it out on their own. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can't... I, I, I'm going to be honest, guys. This this whole thing is about these books is now driving me mad. <laughs> I, I can't well, find their name! Oh, no! Um, now, at, at 10th, we have Trackless Hunting. Um, you can't be tracked except by magical means unless you choose to leave a trail. And whenever you learn a new exploration knack or replace an existing one, you can choose one from rogue exploration knacks. So we've got even more dipping into uh, into other exploration types. I actually did think this was not cool. Um, which is, I'd say, is go- I'd say is going to make the it's I'd say it's going to make the um the teens very interesting for rangers. Because that now that now makes three other classes who they can dip into for exploration knacks. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, then we get the exploration knacks themselves. Um, so we have. Shall we begin with the blue, the yellow, or the red? Um, let's start. Let's let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So what? Did, so what were the reds? Okay, beast friend. If you spend 10 minutes befriending and feeding a medium or smaller beast of CR 1 8 or less, you become its guardian ranger. It follows you and is loyal to you, but acts independently. In combat, it rolls its own initiative, and it acts on its own turn. The beast won't attack except as a reaction to being attacked, but it can take other actions as normal and makes death saving throws. You can only be a guardian ranger to one beast at a time. This is dumb. This is dumb. You better have level up, guys. You better have some means by which everybody can have a pet of some variety. And hopefully your iteration of the Beastmaster allows you to uh, improve upon those features in some capacity. But this is this is dumb. Stop entrapping me. Stop trolling people who want to have a pet. Introduce a system of pets by which pets are not these um, creatures doomed to die by dragon breath or something like that, or get rid of it entirely. Don't troll people who want to iterate on a specific... Don't troll people who want to iterate on a, frankly, on, on a narrative and mechanical archetype that they expect to be within your game. Don't troll them. Don't laugh at them and say, ha ha ha, uh, you thought that you were going to bring your, your stupid wolf into combat or whatever, or your hawk, 
and now it's going to die every three hours. Wouldn't but wouldn't by this logic this also mean that you couldn't do that that particular animal that particular um beast that you had during the Zeitgeist campaign? <laughs> no, because anybody could take that. Anybody could anybody could take Fey Beast Tamer, and that's my problem with this. Is any because Beast Friend is something that looks like it might come out of a background, for instance. It's on that power level. This is not something that you will put in Exploration Max. And if you wanted to put Beast Friend in Exploration Max, you would make it larger, small, larger, smaller, and of CR. Because when do you get when do you get these Nax? Let's look at this. What's the first time that you get an exploration act? Um, so uh, exploration oh, first neck. level. Yeah, it's first you two, level. You get two. At, you get two at first. You get an extra then one at three. second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth. And tenth. Okay, and so what then you do in order to make sure that the beast friend isn't too powerful is they're going to make sure that because they already have a few a few qualifiers in here like. The beast won't attack except as a reaction being attacked, but it can take other actions as normal. So if you were able to, for instance, uh, do a large creature, a attract a large creature with this, or even a flying creature with this, it would serve as a fairly handy mount. This would be a, a, a very handy default mount feature that somebody could pick up, because having your, having your steed, da having your griffin dash is fantastic. You don't want it to attack. You want that. You have a need for speed. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, understand, that could be overpowered, right? I mean, duh. Right. But look at Master Tracker over here. The Level Up folks have already invented the solution to the problem that they've just created by ignoring the problem that the designers they're uh, ostensibly improving upon have already created, which is they have a prerequisite. Ninth level, you have to be this certain level in order to take this uh, exploration knack. Just attach that to Beast Friend, say, 6th level, mm -hmm. and, um, what is it? And you could make a, a higher CR thing for... <sighs> you could say, uh, you know, once you've reached 6th level, you could go up to large, and once you reach 8th level, you go up to CR1 or CR2 or something like that. CR2, a feature like this, for a specific class... Which is meant to iterate on, a, invoke a sense of specialization as a consequence of choosing this class should go up to something like CR2 and it should go up to something like size large. Give me the bear. Give me the bear. You want Give bear me cavalry. the giant eagle. Yes. No, not bear cavalry. Bear, bear cavalry is dumb. We're going to yell at people. Angry GM, I'm covering for you, baby. You still got shooters out here. Um, Anyways, any jokes aside, though, I mark that in red because either, like, Beast Friend, this is something that anybody should be able to Which is why I introduced it in Chilmus Valley. I introduced the Animal ta Tamer secondary class. I mean, anybody can... I mean, Jesus, you could you could have way bigger creatures. Like, but that's, that's it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I will admit that with, some, with something like Beast Friend... And I'm I'm not saying this should be official. I would just do this as my own personal house rule, just to just to watch people find ways to break to break things. Remove the only one friend at a time, so that some so that somebody spends an entire evening befriending all the animals they they can. Or downtime activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Great mechanical hook when people aren't obsessed with making it useless and trolling the players. And if it if it sounds like if it sounds like I want I want to have an encounter where somebody decides to throw to throw in um a literal call a literal call of the wild of of a bunch of different animals intruding intruding on a fight yes the voice of the menagerie <laughs> I I actually restricted that with the animal tamer I said like you could have a retinue of these creatures up to your wisdom modifier but only one of them follows you into combat in, in like a given time the other creatures will defend themselves and stuff like that but like this is let's keep this manageable <laughs> um but I can I can certainly sympathize yeah um now were there any were there any other reds or was that the one that stood out there was one other red and it's right below it's called calls of the wild <laughs> <laughs>
Using verbal and nonverbal cues to communicate with beasts, you can gain basic information from them or making a simple quest. I actually think I misread this one. Uh, this is going to yellow for passable. Mm -hmm. I find ear to the ground to be kind of useless. Really? Y you have to remain stationary. And it re and it rem and it uh it requires sound and vibrations alone. I just true, can't. true. But like, there's there's a little bit of a. It's I actually marked that one in blue. Um, Serious? I did, I did, and the, the there's reason just so many restrictions though. There are a lot of restrictions, but it generates a very specific moment where the person goes like, hey, like everybody in a mystery, in a situation which produces mystery. So this is not, because you mentioned this is definitely not a combat feature, right? I, I didn't even say it was in or out of combat. I just think the fact that you have to remain stationary makes it, you have to remain stationary for a minute, one minute. Right. And, Which, and, I mean, that's relevant in combat by and large, and we don't well, like... This is definitely not a combat feature. I'm saying we're agreed on that front. Like, this is definitely... I mean, that, that cuts out a huge number of situations in which you would use that. It would be more useful if you could at least make it mobile. Like, a tiny bit mobile. Get, for example, say that as part of it, you, you, you spend a minute stationary. And you have to close your eyes. And you have to keep your eyes closed for the duration. Right. But you can move at five feet. You know, a five-foot square if you, if you actually have to measure that at that time. Right. Or a five-foot radius or something like that. So, like, we're still sticking with the theme of... Um, you have to be stuck in a, uh, in a specific yeah, area. But... And you're relying on your blind sight and tremor sense and stuff like that. Or you're relying, on, you're relying on sound and vibrations alone. That maintains the... I get what you mean. Just the reason the, why the I like whole... this feature is I like this. Um, you like the flavor. Let's, it's let's not... be honest here. You like the flavor. Well, it's it's specific because there's not much flavor in the in the ability itself. Actually, it's sure. the situation that this is used in and becomes effective in. It's like a moment in which you guys are investigating because you're not using this in combat. Uh, you guys are using this in like a low mystery thing. Like you enter a room and like you're looking to, you're trying to find somebody or something. You're trying to figure out what happened. Uh, you know, you barge Whoa. into the hotel room and you discover everything is is like strewn about and stuff like that. And your ranger presses their ear to the floor and stuff like that. And they stretch in a five foot radius, but definitely don't move in a five foot radius because that would ruin the ability. <laughs> that would ruin the ability. And they they perk up all of a sudden and they're like somebody's in that closet or, or somebody or, you. or somehow because it says deduce information deduce information hmm. that's very that's very vague yeah to be to be quite honest i think i don't th i i don't think this is terrible but it definitely needs a rewrite um uh, you know what you guys have convinced me i think you're i think you're right on that this could be it, developed into this could be developed into something a little bit more mystical, I think. It could, and now that you guys are talking about it like this, um, it, it, it's it's just too many restrictions, and the effect is a little vague. The, right. The um the the at be, at best, I would consider it a yellow. Just right. Just just um put just put it through the just give it a few editing passes. Um, right. Like as it stands, it's it's passable for gameplay and stuff like that, but it's probably not going to come up all that often, and it's going to be weird in, in gameplay. I I think yeah, this goes to well, yellow. I agree. And then and then with the whole deduce information as if using blind sight or tremor sense, uh, depending on on what, what exactly the the GM uh, defines as information, you can deduce. Uh. Does this mean that since it's in 30 feet in every direction, meaning it's a, a 30 foot diameter or 30 foot radius sphere centered right. on, on you, does this mean I can sense things under the floorboards if they're moving? Oh, that's, I mean, that's fine. I know. That's I'm just, cool. I thought you were about to, I thought you were about to yell about the fact that it goes, it technically goes up in the air, stuff no. like that. 
I didn't, I didn't consider the floorboards. That actually would be a pretty cool use up, of it. Up, up in the air makes sense, too, because the attic or hell birds flying overhead. Vibrations, again. Right. But but then, what about that one GM who decides, huh, does this mean they can also find that thing that's hidden, in the, uh, hidden underneath something that's strewn about? Do they suddenly find that key that's hidden under the pillow because someone ransacked the hotel room? <laughs> that would actually be perfect. It's like you know, you knock on the, you knock on the uh, on the floor a little bit, and get the jingling of the key, right? And would you, well, you hear that something is hollow, and uh, yeah, it, and this is able to this this is one of those abilities where you don't need to worry about everybody trying to do this. This, this seems just the specific enough, or our rewrite of it would be specific enough at the very least. Mm-hmm. To the extent that people would be, somebody using this in your campaign would not feel like, all right, well, nobody else can tap their cane on the floorboards to see if it sounds hollow or anything like that. And it's like, no, this is just, this is just something that the ranger is really good at doing and they get some special extra benefit for the attempt. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But so, yeah, yeah, I I can be convinced of keeping it at yellow. Um, I just... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, name, in there. <coughs> the name the name of it though is is the big one for me i i imagine literally the ranger whomever they are ear to the ground in the middle of like a volcano what like it, okay that might be pushing it but i, I was gonna, <laughs> i was gonna make the joke about ear from vinland saga but yeah i can't top that no, 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 no. That is actually, that's another situation where if you were playing that at the table and, like, one of us is the other's GM, it's like, oh, um, there's a vent to the southeast that doesn't... You you hear a... There's silence coming from the southeast and maybe it's a vent that's actually safe to travel. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the, there's, this, there's this shunt in the rock at the, in the southeast that, uh isn't making the same hissing and popping sounds literally everything around uh, else around you is making. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> That's why I say it's like these weird situations where this is kind of cool. It's just like, you know, we gave it a little bit of an editing pass. It would be, maybe those weird situations would be maybe not less weird, but they would come up more often. Yeah. And they'd um, also be infinitely more comical. Now- <laughs> Are there any standouts you can think of when it comes to yellow tier with exploration next? Uh, most of these are, or not, maybe not most of these. It's it's equal split between blue and it, I know that I've been yelling at the exploration next for the for the moment and stuff like that. But actually, the blues actually outnumber everything else. For yellows, uh, grub hunter. Th- this is a category: grub hunter, healing salves, um. Herbal bitters. Yes. No, 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 no. Not herbal bitters. That's that's one I'm going to leave out for a moment. Okay. Uh, but healing salves and grub hunter were both these kind of like um. Grub hunter is good berry. <laughs> grub it is, hunter it is, is good. outright good berry. It is. It is. It just keeps you that like it has no additional effect until the creature finishes a shorter long rest. So it's actually a little bit, it's like mixing Grub Hunter with the base 5th edition healer. Uh, I marked this as yellow because I thought it, it. this is one of those things where it's not something that I think everybody should be able to do necessarily, but I think it is something that would be best fit in a wider exploration system that everybody had access to, that everybody could spec their character into. I feel like it should fit into a system that is not that giving characters improve upon but don't command exclusive access to. And I think I've mentioned this in other places where I thought, you know, these exploration acts, these are just cool features that have to do with the wilderness, but they don't feel like they fit into a wider system. They feel like add-ons for a combat-focused game. And if I'm buying a level-up playtest, I would prefer it if I had that extra system which was exploration focus that this kind of this played into. So I, I, I want gr- I want grub I want delicious protein filled and healthy grubs, non poisonous grubs. I want that to be an entry on an exploration chart or a card that you select out of a deck or draw out of a deck. Not not something that um, rangers are able to pick up. 
That's why I have it marked in yellow. Mechanically, it's interesting, and ditto for healing salves. Yeah. Now, when it com- when now when it comes to when it comes to ma- when it comes to something like Master Tracker, we already talked about that. How that kind of fixes the problem that something else introduced. Um, Wait, did we? Yeah, you're we- the one who said it. Yeah, you. No, no, that- I thought that was the ear to the ground. No, when you were talking about Beast Friend. Right. What about where does that fit in with Master? Oh, 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 oh. Where the oh with the prerequisite thing? Do you want to talk about the actual ability itself? Because I marked that in blue. So, yeah, let's get let's get into that. So, Master Tracker, you spend five minutes looking at a thirty foot diameter outdoor area to study the ground and other clues. You learn all events which transpired in that area in the last twenty four hours as though you had witnessed them yourself although you do not learn secret information not obvious to an observer. The information you gain is is only that which would be learned by sight. You do not gain sound-based information or learn what creatures in the area said to each other. Once you have used this feature, you you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. See, that pisses me off right there, that last end bit. Why is that feature... Like, the, the ranger is known to be a good tracker... And you've already got the restriction of ninth level to even get the thing. Um, right. I, I, I we, we, we've already gone ad infinitum, ad nauseum about our, uh, our particular dislike of the short, long rest resource management in certain situations. And in this situation, I, I like, I, I love the ability. It, I definitely agree that that's a blue. But that those last two lines, those last two lines make me want to shiv someone with words. I, yeah, don't, I, want, they... I don't understand the point of of restricting of restricting this feature in that way because it already has to, it already has in it already has enough restrictions as it is. You have the time factor. You have the fact that you're only getting um vi- you're only getting vision based info exclusively, and the and, and you're. The, and you have the fact that you're only you're only getting the last day's worth of, worth of info in the in this regard, right? But here here's the thing: they looked at the designers. I'm gonna I'm gonna what I normally do as a designer is I translate player feedback into something that's actionable for the designers. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do the reverse here because I, 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 which helps under you know designers that that assist designers in understanding their players and and making the proper adjustments, if any, are to be made. Um, I'm going to help you guys with that now so that we know how to yell at these designers for the misstep in this <laughs> in this ability. Is They looked at this and said, this ability is so cool, and it is. They said, well, a player's going to do this for like every 30 feet. And not every session, but for like for one session, they might do this for like every room they come across. And get really like, and just make everybody sick of the ability off of that one session. And so that's going to be that impact would be so degenerate. It would have such a negative impact on play that we have to make sure we have to restrict any capacity, any chance that they would ever do this in game. So they went to long rest. Now, obviously, long rest is not what you need to. You could do shorter long rest. That would be fine. That would restrict. That would keep that situation from coming up. Which it probably wouldn't come up, but even if it did come up, you could say things like, uh, "Like, okay, you're able to, if your GM determines appropriate, or you could tie it to a check, you can determine that for an additional five minutes, you can follow the trail of, of activity another thirty feet, and you could just basically keep it going thirty feet for five minutes, thirty feet for five minutes, because it's that either." <laughs> Lord of the Rings, the movie, that scene uh, where Aragorn goes over and he he gets the idea of where the hobbits have been taken, etc., or what happened to them, what what kind of battle has taken place between the orcs and the armies of men, or whatever it was. Or, uh, uh, example fresher in my mind, the opening c- cinematic to The Witcher 3, where Geralt and Vesemir are walking around and they're, you, they're looking at these different clues and the cinematic shows you what happened. Uh, that the 
Boondock yeah, Saints. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I would like to point out that when that with uh with Witchers, they they have Batman vision. I mean Witcher vision. I mean right. magic. <laughs> Which, as we've established, I'm fine with Rangers. I feel like if, out of all the classes, something that's a little bit that's physical, but just just above the level of physical, so to where it's mystical, uh, I think that Rangers are the are the best possible class to fit that in. The monks of the forest. <laughs> I hate yeah. you so <laughs> much. <laughs> you made a good <laughs> point. I made a good point, but he knew I also made that point to get at him. Come on now, Ash. You know my job here. <laughs> yes, yes. But I had to rub it in. Salt on the wound and such. But yeah, so this this definitely... This is a really cool ability. Mm -hmm. It needs a... They, they... This is another area in which they should have uh, diverged from base 5th edition, as opposed to making it so that we can use magic as often, or or apparently sometimes at all, uh, they should have diverged from 5th edition's insistence on making cool abilities needlessly time-restricted. They, they have access to the solution for their problem in its own, not another ability this time, in its own ability, which is 5 minutes for 30 feet. Mm -hmm. Make it a contiguous, if you want to restrict time and distance and stuff like that, um, Make it a contiguous thing. It's like, all right, well, you can continue following the trail unless your GM says no for whatever reason for another five minutes and another thirty feet, and you can keep that process up. And if you want the, if you want them to not do it somewhere else, and you want to make sure that they're not like hopping from place to place to place and like going to do a new five minutes and a new thirty feet uh, without making it connected to the previous one, then you do a shorter long rest. You do not, under any circumstances, make it restricted to a long rest. That's dumb. Stop being like 5th edition designers. Be good designers. L want, you want to make your players do cool stuff and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. No I, long I, rest restrictions. I, Get I, out. I, I can think of one situation in which the GM might say, yeah, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. you, you've been doing the 5 minutes 30 feet thing from, say, a house in a secluded alleyway, and now you're going out to the main thoroughfare of this slightly larger than average town. Yeah, there's no there's no tracks there, guys. Um, are you going to discern their tracks from the thousands of wheel uh, wheel grooves and hoof prints and footprints? And no, it's gone. It's erased. Right. Basically, in fact, you could probably. Yeah, all GM, I think all the GM, maybe you wouldn't even need to write it as GM restriction. You would just need to write it as uh, an environmental condition, effectively. Yes. Which could apply to other areas of the game, where the environmental condition is uh, well-traveled or messy or w whatever. I don't know what you would name it, but basically, sorry, Terrain. things are too screwed up here in some capacity for you to discern where it is that people were going, you know, survival the, checks. The overall point is not everything needs to be res needs to be resolved with a, with a long rest. Nothing yeah, needs to be Jesus. resolved with a fucking long rest. Mm -hmm. um, so frustrating to watch people do just constantly shoot themselves in the foot with this shit. Um, Guys, please. So what's your next? What's your next blue here? Ooh, going back to the next blue. Read the room. This one was really good. <laughs> this one I don't think has a long rest restriction. So even better. Ten um, minutes observing someone. Oh, man. Facial expressions, body language, and vocal intonation. You could detect minute details which give you insight into the creatures within 30 feet of you. For the next minute, you can direct your focus oh, on any no. one creature that you can see within 30 feet. If the creature oh, yeah. has an intelligence score or lower, doesn't speak a language, it's unaffected. You learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what is most on its mind in that moment. As an action, you could sit, shift your attention to another creature's thoughts. Oh, this is, no. What's wrong? <laughs> this, is, this is the excuse for every ranger ever to find the darkest corner in the tavern, sit and drink. That's what this is. This is justification for a trope. 
<laughs> oh boy. Remember oh, that the amount of dark corners that exist in any inn, tavern, or bar is equivalent to the number of rangers pr present plus one. <laughs> Shit. Oh, man. Uh, shall I degrade this to yellow for, the, for no, you then? No, 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 it's, no. It's still blue. It's a fantastic <laughs> ability. I'm just... I'm just salty that it's a justification for a trope. Because <laughs> I was, because I was about to say this is a, either another Witcher, and the Witcher is is Ranger adjacent in some capacity. Oh, um, he's definitely Ranger adjacent, considering right? that he's a mutant. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Really, this is your urban ranger. This is access to your urban ranger right here. This is the this is the manifestation of some of the ranger abilities be. expressed in social situations. And this is also an example. <laughs> one last note: this is also an example of social abilities done right. You provoke a specific result. You get to learn the surface thoughts of the creature. Nobody else gets to do that. It's not based on increasing the. Uh, the, the dice. insight check or something like that. Yeah, you know? this, is, this is just I've been looking at you all for long enough that I know what you're thinking. Right? That's that's not creepy at all, Mr. Ranger. Not creepy at all. Well, I, think the, I think the idea is that somebody noticed. But, um, but yeah. It's still creepy. Sorry, it, even, if, even if nobody notices, it's still creepy. It's just like the, the, the age-old question. If a tree falls in the forest and no one around is to hear it, does it make a sound? The answer is yes. I don't care what that koan is about. The answer is yes. It still disturbed the air. Even if those disturbed airwaves never reach anybody, they were still disturbed. Sound was still made. Even if nobody knows the ranger's being a creep, he's still a fucking creep. <laughs> now, I um, I will. I am put. I am putting my thoughts on this slightly to the shelf. For a long while later, when we inevitably get to the bard, because I read, I look at read the Roman. I'm thinking this is going to get abused by diplomats or builds. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, Giving the ranger a, a little bit of diplomats, right? There, uh, man, I think that's so cool. Mm. This, this is one of those moments, like where I get to, I I yell at these designers often, but when I get to something that I mark in blue, it just makes me fall in love, and I. I that's most of what I want to do for a game. I want to fall in love. Yeah. You get to, I'm very happy. You get to, to bask in in the fact that the that your ranger baby got something cool. Right now to shit on relentless pursuit. <laughs> <laughs> and now for something completely different. <laughs> Too much wholesome for one minute. Uh, relentless pursuit. Once you have successfully picked up the tracks of a creature, you're able to follow those tracks without any need for further checks for a period of up to seven days. This is where I mentioned things like um, a just wide direct to Master story. Tracker. What's up? Literally rip this and add it to Master Tracker. I uh, don't put this any. Well, this seems to imply that if you want to track somebody, you're going to have to roll a check every day. And something that I actually mentioned, Monk might remember this. I don't know if you'll remember this. This was in my Chilmus Valley interview. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe in, like, look, if. If an individual action is going to stretch beyond the course of a day, it needs a different action resolution system. You don't want to roll every single day for new foraging checks and new um, and new tracking checks and new this and new that. If I want, to, if we're going on a seven day trip, I want to roll one check to begin with, and then I want the and then under that system, for instance. I want Relentless Pursuit to give me something extra rather than just not making me roll additional checks that shouldn't be rolled anyways because the table's not going to roll all those checks. Like, we all know that. Like, like, like the daily do you succeed, the daily do you not starve checks, the daily do you not get lost checks and stuff like that. If it doesn't I have... Don't, I, don't like the, I don't like those checks as a matter of principle because I feel that if... It's busy work. If a if there if there is not the possibility of failure, and I'm not talking the oh well oh well there's a five there's a five percent chance if so, that someone's gonna roll a one. No, I'm talking there. I'm talking there needs to be some possibility of failure and some consequences for for failure. There is no point to the check. Right. And doing the doing the same check m multiple times over over the course of several narrative days just just to just to see if you d just roll to roll to see if you didn't fuck up is not going to be interesting 
Now, Bowling for basic competency? No, that's now, fucking you stupid. Were, now, now, uh, the, now, in something like this, if you were tr if you were tracking, and then all of a sudden you had to deal with severe weather, okay, yeah, then do the check. Like if you're tr if you're tr if you're trying to track in the middle of, in the middle of a field, and all of a sudden you start hearing the sound of the sound of lightning, and it's a little bit harder to focus. Okay, yeah, fine. Other than that, no. Those are more unique events, and the the, the important thing is because I I remember uh, Justin Alexander made a made a tweet, and he said on this topic, he said his biggest gripe about five E D and D is that often models specialization by trivializing the associated actions. If you're interested in X, you design a character who's good at X, but the result isn't doing more of X, it's that X becomes automatic and it's no longer part of the game. That's something that you mentioned earlier with the, um, that's something you were talking about with like, all right, my, my Forge expertise basically removes forging from the game. But as we all agree, and as you, mentioned, as you also mentioned, we don't want to have to do the basic competency check. So something I responded with, this is, in Cho this is again in Chomus Valley, this is why I think an external, self-sufficient, technically see something that you could design to be system ag agnostic and then translate into whatever your particular edition or game is, um, but based on system agnostic principles and then adapted to the specific system is what I mean. I said, these character features would remove the mechanics from play if the mechanics had positive success states, Right? Most travel wilderness mechanics are avoid starvation or getting avoid getting lost instead of try to find cool stuff and get there faster, right? So you're tracking the um, you're tracking what's who is it? Uh, you're you're tracking the enemy burglar, and if you succeed on the check, it's not like well you get to continue succeeding on the trail or something like that. Maybe the ranger gets some special benefit like. When you finally catch up to the guy, you get to surprise him on him. Or you just so have closed the gap much quicker. Yeah, or you, you get to pro progress your trail because, hey, he's already found the way for you. If you're tracking him, maybe that means that you're able to go that much faster because you're like, well, he didn't die yet because we haven't found the body. So we're going to keep following his footsteps and that lets us we go. Have, we haven't found the body and we haven't found any signs that wildlife dragged off the body. You have to remember exactly. the second part. Mm -hmm. oh. This is something that came into our discussion on... Uh, this is relevant to another discussion that we... I actually really enjoy how long this thing is, is stretching so far, because rangers are so chock full of, of narrative and mechanical hooks that are so often underutilized. Do you guys remember the di class rebuild discussion that we had? Yes. Right. Remember what Sorry. my recommendations... I think you guys might have gotten confused by this, but do you remember my recommendations for the Ranger? And a re basically a replacement or add-on for favored enemy so that Rangers always had some measure of specialization for whatever they came across? I up, remember, like tro I a trophy of whatever they killed that day. And yeah, and it's, kept... it's funny you mentioned that kind of thing, because um, Tanner, the guy behind um, Heavens and Heresies, basically did that. Ooh. The research pile grows. Um, <laughs> I did in, now in full disclosure, um he's on, he's on the server. I've ha I've had my back and forth with him. I had him on for I had him on for an interview not too long ago. Um he has a he has a very interesting um philosophy where he's tr he's trying to dial back a lot of the individual focus design in um in D D for his project. I can that is a perfectly noble goal. Mm -hmm. And can come out with some pretty uh pretty interesting design as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um so you, you you guys got you mentioned you were basically I think you got it. Uh you take a trophy from the creature and you get the first a creature you kill that day and you basically have right. a uh, a bonus of some sort based on the trophy and the creature right. for the rest funny, of the day. It's, it's the not the first it creature to... that you like. You get to kill. You get to choose the creature that you kill mm -hmm. for, to get the trophy. But you basically got it right. Otherwise, is that gives you a bonus. Yeah. And there's one other note on that front, which is you can discard the trophy yep. for an instantaneous effect. Yeah. The, the big example was you know oozes uh, thro throwing an ooze at someone. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Your passive is a protective coating. Uh, you can't take damage as a result of making successful attacks. 
So if you attack an ooze, it doesn't get to like spit slime at you as a reaction or anything like that. It doesn't work. You've already thought of that. And of course, that doesn't just work for oozes. That also works on the fire el elemental that would have set you on fire. So it has like, it's not only useful against that creature, but it's focused on that creature. D the discard, as you mentioned, slime strike as an action, you can restrain a creature within 30. DC 10 athletic sense. Yeah. Stuff like that. And I did that for all the different creature types, which is why I go back to things like, for instance, oops, I almost clicked on the wrong window. If you look at Relentless Pursuit, there's no particular reason why you couldn't, like, okay, track, track, tracking the creature is sufficient. You don't actually have to kill the creature. Just tracking them for this duration is enough to get that benefit against that specific creature. Mm -hmm. So it still has a restriction, but you have a new way of gaining this benefit so that the, the tracking phase is also a setup, a Monster Hunter-style setup where, like, you're running across the tracks and stuff like that, and occasionally you're able to get materials off the ground from the creature that you go after. And this is just building on top of that. It's a new mechanical hook. That's why I marked it in yellow. Yeah. Now, stop giving me stop giving me competency checks. <laughs> That's a really good yeah. way of phrasing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't need to check for basic competency. Yeah. Um and then then we come to the the, the uh exploration neck I was actually commenting on before we started recording today. Um <laughs> how is it that by focusing on peripheral sight you can suddenly see into the fucking ethereal plane what it's like it's like that comic of, of somebody who rolled a natural 20 in perception and asked what is he what does he see and he goes everything <laughs> i mean i love i love the flavor i love what it does it's fun it's another it's another specific effect based on a specific thing you do. There's not like you're not getting your pluses. You're getting a specific effect, mm -hmm. right? So you know, uh, the it has a restriction, fifth level or higher. Yeah. Um, and it lets you see invisible creatures and objects, and even sense creatures and objects in the ethereal plane. What? Would you still like this ability of the object? I, I'm going to ask you two qualifiers here. Okay. Would you like? Would you still like this ability if it removed the thing about the ethereal plane? Yes, actually, even without the ethereal plane, it's it's pretty useful to detect invisible creatures and objects. Right. In fact, um, that's probably the that's probably the primary draw for most people. It is. But even but, then, just just saying that you're using peripheral sights, sounds, and other signs of unseen passage. First of all. The only thing you could get from unseen passage is sounds and like uh, epithelials, scuff marks, things of that nature. Right. Um, and that still isn't going to tell you the exact area that the invisible creature or whatever is in. So now you can just detect them. Period. This leads me into the into the secondary question because there is a little bit of human being. This is something I like about human beings. It's it's one. It goes back to a. Or I suppose I should nod to an earlier discussion that we've had without retreading it that about uh, the unique adva evolutionary advantages of human beings. The fact that... <laughs> Exhaustion predation, yes. Right. It, well, no, not that one. The, the fact of... Um, I don't know if we discussed this, but for instance, you're very de good at detecting camouflaged creatures uh, in the lower half of your vision specifically. Human beings are very good at detecting camouflage, uh, particularly when the thing lies below them. If you're ever playing video games, like if you're ever playing Titanfall 2 or uh, Team Fortress 2 for that matter, uh, anybody who's using Cloak, whether that's the spy or the or the invisibility pilot, um, you're going to be way better at detecting that if you have high ground, for instance. So there are, there is a little, there's a little bit of a precedent for this insofar as you could detect vague areas of, mm -hmm. of motion and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit of a precedent when it comes to other signs of unseen passage, like the air. You notice that uh, the air grows colder, and you start seeing your breath in the presence of a ghost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if the ranger had a more explicitly mystical empowerment to them, it was understood that the basic ranger has a little bit of mysticism to them. Like I said, monk of the forest. Right, monk of the forest. Would then the ethereal plane edition be acceptable? The, the ethereal play. Okay, I I accept the ethereal play part. I'm cool with it. I just 
the the logic of what is as written is making no sense for the ethereal portion. Well, that's, yes, that's what I'm asking if you. The, if, they if, put the that mysticism, if the mysticism was more evident, then the ethereal plane portion could be hand waved as, oh, the ranger's just focusing his forest powers. Thanks, guy. <laughs> You right. have the power of life and nature on your side, and it's making your eyes see everything. <laughs> I can see the future. If anyone remembers that meme. Mm. <laughs> now I heard it. <laughs> I do find it interesting that the that the one um the one combat maneuver um tree that's at, that's added here is spirited steed um because all the others were explored in fighter so this yes. is one that was specifically and added th for ranger and this one is, this one is retroactively going to be in fighter and in um paladin, and, and paladin later which we ha which we haven't got um we haven't gotten to yet and it tech it technically isn't paladin when we do get to it but that but i'm getting ahead of myself um this is basic this is basically for anybody who want anybody who wants to do do horseback combat, um, mounted mounted fighting. Yeah, it's, um, it it would certainly be interesting to do this as a ranger, but certainly not out of, certainly not out of the ordinary. Um, well, especially if uh, Ash were to suddenly get his way, and you get bear cavalry after all. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, by the way, Ash is a uh, Ash has wandered off again. Of course, uh, of course. <laughs> um, so when when it comes to so when it com when it comes to the when it comes to what's of what's available. Um, uh, first off, yeah, I, I can. There is there is one kind there is one kind of mounted combination I can think of that's slightly more terrifying. And that is some that is somebody using a displacer beast as a mount. Um you although if although if you're taking that approach you would you wouldn't need you wouldn't need to have any kind of reins because you could just use the tentacles. And yes, that it yes that is that is completely horrible. But let's be let's be honest. There are worse jokes that can be made with displacer beasts than their um, tentacles with with spiked combs at the end of them. I hope both of you didn't bail on me. No, <laughs> I'm just not sure how else to respond. Um, but the, but, um, so the, f the opening thing that we have is the, is Cavalier Combat Stance, so our AC, AC boost based on half your proficiency bonus, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about, I don't know about the whole half part of that. I feel like it. I feel like it should be a full. I feel like it should be full instead of half. But mm -hmm. that's just me. Um. Let's see. Then, la then Lancer Strike. Um. Although Lancer Strike should that should that just be death? <laughs> that's a bad joke. <laughs> that's a. This is Lancer Strike, not Gay Bowl. <laughs> um. See, have to be wielding something with the reach property mounted and move tw and move twenty or more feet. Um, make a melee weapon attack against a creature within reach. Deal a extra d6 damage, and the creature makes a strength pr strength save or is knocked prone. Okay, sta very very standard. Then we have mounted charge. Move up to. Basically, a charge action with your with your mount, um, with the first attack having advantage. Um, I, I, 
I it's interest it's probably a smart move that if you take if you take this action you can't use dash. Mm -hmm. Um So then we have we have riding leap. Um as long as you're mounted and move thirty feet in a straight line first, you can jump further and higher than, than usual. Okay okay. Um it's a it's a glorified long jump. That doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. Okay, fine. Um, mm -hmm. Rearing assault. Choose a number of creatures equal to your proficiency bonus that are within twenty feet. Each one makes a wisdom save against against a DC equal to the result of your check. On a failure, they're frightened. Um, a creature the same size as your size as your mount or larger has advantage. Um. I feel like I feel like you're putting a little bit of a little bit of faith in the dice gods on something like that. And while there's no, while I don't have any issues with with inflicting frightened um for th for 3 points I think that might be a little pricey. 3 points for rearing assault? Yeah. Um especially for the how limited the effect is. Yeah, this is this is probably Pretty bad on that matrix we keep bringing up. Mm -hmm. Um, writing like, race, especially and let's see, writing reflexes only being one point. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Not sure why it has to be second degree instead of first degree, but okay. Um, trample. Move up to half speed without pro without provo without provoking opportunities. Um, creatures in your path that are one that are at least one size smaller than your mount make a dex save. On failure, they take two d ten bludgeon and are knocked prone. I'm oh, saying uh, on success, they uh they just don't take anything. Mm -hmm. I'm oh they prob I'm uh, actually that's that is something that I think that I think should be clarified because. Um, what because people would ask, is it a case of they take no damage on a success, or do they only take half damage? Um. Then we have saddled blows, which is three points and is a third degree. Um. Until the end of your next turn, when you use a melee weapon to attack a creature smaller than your mount it makes a it makes a strength save on a failure it suffers either confused knocked prone or is slowed i'm not sure that three points really uh i feel like this should be a two pointer honestly yeah especially since you can only choose one and they're not all they're not none of them are really that that extreme mm -hmm. um welcome back ash um Launch strike is at two points. You leap ten feet away and make a melee weapon attack against a creature within your reach before you land. Um, uh, On hit, your attack be up becomes a critical. So you spend two points to basically make it so that you uh, ignore a critical threat range. Yeah. Um, I can. S I'm okay with this being two points. Then the last is sacrifice mount. When your when your creature when a creature targets you with an attack, you can use your reaction to swing down the side of your mount, making it the target instead of you. Um, we should didn't call it sacrifice mount. Perhaps a perhaps a friendly friendlier way of of, of phrasing that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Aside aside from some aside from some effects here, I use kill my horse. <laughs> aside from some of the effects possibly being a little too expensive for what they can do, um, I don't have too much of an issue with with spirited steed. I don't see a whole lot of rangers using using it. I'm not not saying that rain not saying that people won't build rangers that will use it, but. I see that I see this kind of thing being used more often by fighters and paladins than I do rangers. I'm inclined to agree, especially 
especially in the level up playtest. Um, cause I, cause I have a, um, my, my DM is letting me use my rebuild ranger. Um, I've now made two characters with it for this particular campaign. It looks like I'll be going back to the original one. They were mounted. Mm -hmm. uh, and they could do that because the beast archetype, the pack master archetype, allowed them to create, select a CR1, up to CR1, and up to large creature. So they were able to go with a cave lizard, or a giant lizard, or whatever it was called, yep. so they could have a mount. Um, I don't think these guys are going to have as easy access to that sort of thing. So, yeah. But th this now does bring bring us to the to the to what's been lovingly nicknamed the subclass hours. So, you know the drill by now, Ash. Indeed. The thumbs up or thumbs down. Yep. So, I'll I'll start at the top. Beastmaster Beastmaster. Thumbs down. Hands down. If these people are going to include a feature which is effectively trolling everybody who wants to fulfill the narrative or mechanical fantasy of having a beast compa animal companion in some capacity, in spite of the fact that it's been done well, fantastically even, in plenty of other games, then they are not going to fulfill the, fan the, f fulfill the fantasy in a concentrated in a subclass it's not happening okay they have they have removed any degree of confidence i could possibly have in, have in them and, and until they rectify that specific feature i my opinion will remain as such all right side question beastmaster with primal companion primal companion is the tasha's variant of it is it not yes that that was it. That was in Tasha's Cauldron. The Tasha's Cauldron to everything. If I were to scroll down, for instance, and look at the, yeah, the Primal Companions. Uh, it's a third level Beastmaster feature. Replaces the Ranger's Companion feature. Magically summon a Primal Beast, which draws strength from your bond with nature. It it has the standard thing. You're able to, you know, friendly to your companions, obeys your commands. Uh, you have three options for it, which are Beast of the Sea, Beast of the Land, and Beast of the Sky. They're basically giving you very, um... They're giving you these, these you know, thematic differences. It's worth noting that Beast of the Sea and Beast of the Land are both medium beasts, whereas Beast of the Sky is a small beast. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in combat, the beast acts during your turn. It can move and use its reaction on its own. But the only take action it takes is the dodge action, unless you take a bonus action on your turn to command it to take another action. That action can be one in its stat block or some other action. Uh, you can also sacrifice one of your attacks when you take the attack action to command the beast to take the attack action. Uh, if you're incapacitated, the beast can take any action of its choice, not just dodge. Uh, based on, based on all of this, I think it can still attack if you use the bonus action, and then it could do something else if you do another, or, you know, you could have it take two different actions, one of which would be the attack action if you sacrifice your attack along with it, is how I'm interpreting that. They mm -hmm. didn't word it in the best way. <laughs> um, I would still give it a thumbs down. All right. Um, I don't have confidence in designers who troll. Mm -hmm. I was get, I was gonna ask about Beastmaster with Ranger's Companion, but I get the feeling that that's same same result. Thumbs down. On the sorry, can you say that one more time? Um, I get the feeling that Beastmaster with Ranger's Companion in, instead, i.e., the original version of the Beastmaster. Um, oh, especially now with the original version of the Beastmaster. With. with um, that's it. That that'd be a thumbs down. Okay, next. Yep. Um, Fay Wanderer. Fay Wanderer. Okay, interesting choice. I'm going to give this a thumbs in the middle. As mentioned beforehand, and this would be my this would be my touchstone speech so that I don't have to repeat it constantly about how I dislike their removing a lot of magic from the Ranger. I think that other mystical archetypes are going to suffer 
and are not going to be they're not going to fit quite as well within the within the ranger archetypes because they've got because they could theoretically speaking develop another system of magical maneuvers and mag other magical features but tying into the maneuver system and the expertise die system writ large and we've mentioned that in other in other areas when we talked about the arcane archer and the eldritch knight for instance as we were go reviewing the fighter it's not unreasonable to think that they could do that, but I, there's still no reason to just get rid of the spell progression for the ranger themselves. So I'm putting that when it comes to basically any of these different mystical archetypes, uh, I am going to have, of course, individual opinions on them, as I'll soon explain for the Fey Wanderer themselves. Uh, my default assumption is thumbs down. Uh, so with the Fey Wanderer, like a lot of their cool factor is kind of tied into the different spells that they're getting and the different mystical abilities they're accessing. But at the same time, when it comes to the Fey Wanderer themselves, um, some of these are pretty easy to tie into the maneuver system. It's the social abilities that wouldn't be as easy to tie in. So thumbs in the thumbs in the middle for the Fey Wanderer. Some of these some of these might turn into uh, some of these different abilities might turn into increase the total result, which as we've established many times, I hate for the social abilities, but we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Um so next is Gloomstalker. No, I'll add one more note to the Fey Wanderer. The Fey Wanderer, the reason why I'm going to give it a, a thumbs in the middle instead of a just default thumbs down is many of the features in the Fey Wanderer are just mainly you could cast the spell without worrying about spell slots and you're able to just sort of do this. You gain this spell-like effect as a class ability. Um, and that's not tied to the core spell progression by and large. Uh, so, you know, that's why I put it in the middle. That's, that makes it a lot easier to translate to other systems or spinoff systems as we're discussing here. Mm -hmm. All right. So the gloom stalker, I'm going to give this one a thumbs in the thumbs in the up. Thumbs up. <laughs> I'm going to give this a thumbs up. Is uh, There's plenty of mechanical tie-ins to the different maneuver systems that they could access. Some of those abilities are going to be a little bit lackluster where they just say, like, hey, you gain these specific maneuvers for free. Like, you get this Biting Zephyr thing and you get um, whatever the... What was the... What was the one that let you do all those sleight of hand checks as reactions and stuff like that? What was that particular? Sam, help me out here. What was that? Was the uh, that was the one that uh that was the one from a uh, fighter that was the was that mist and shadow or whatever it was called? Yes, yeah. mist and shade. I think it was. Mm -hmm. So they would be able to say things like, "Hey, a a additionally for the gloom stalker, you get these specific, you get these default uh, maneuvers known, and you could select from this list." Uh, a few of the other ones would be like, hey, you're going to count as invisible when you're in dim light or darkness. Um, those are pretty easy to translate over. They're mostly martial with a slight degree of mysticism. You wouldn't get some of the cool magical abilities in addition, but w what what can you do? At least insofar as, as I'm interpreting their design and the direction in which they're taking the design. Not much we could do there, but it's they're going to nail the martial focus, and it's just the mystical focus is just tame enough so that they wouldn't have any trouble translating it to this system. So thumbs up. All right. Um, Horizon Walker. Ooh. Ah, thumbs in the middle. This suffers from a similar mystical issue where, and I'm tempted to, I'm tilting towards thumbs down. I'm to, yeah, so I'm going to say thumbs down with a caveat. The, the mystical abilities that are sort of the focus of Horizon Walker can 
pretty easily be translated into a martial focus. And indeed, they were mostly a martial focus, um, or had a lot of martial focus in their initial iteration of them. I can't remember all the specifics, of course. But if I was doing the, if I was on the design team and I was doing the Horizon Walk, I could put in specific, specific. I could put in specific abilities that keyed off of using your expertise die and using your maneuvers. So if I said, when you use the Biting Zephyr uh, maneuver from the Biting Zephyr list, the number that you res that you roll on the expertise die is the number of spaces you can teleport, for instance, uh, immediately before or after using the maneuver or the effects of the maneuver are resolved, right? So if the guy's 30 feet away, you could roll uh, a six, for instance, on your expertise die. And if you end up rolling that six, you could teleport that f that far ahead and then the maneuver is going to key off. Or you might be right next to him and you might decide that after you succeed this attack, you would want to teleport 30 feet away, which would work nicely for some of the other maneuver systems. So that would be additional multi-class fodder. Um, point being, there are a few ways in which that could be really cool but I'm putting it in thumbs down because of the heavily restricted, restrictive nature of those caveats. Mm -hmm. It's a caveat for a reason. I don't know if they're going to do... I think that they won't hit on that idea. Um, and I think that the overall gimped version of, of Ranger Magic or gimped approach to Ranger Magic is really going to hurt the mystical subclasses overall, as mentioned before. So thumbs down. All right. Thumbs down, but I hope they do it well. Um, Hunter. Oh, thumbs up. Thumbs up. I, I mean, the hunter just fits right in with this. This is uh, this is basically uh, if the hunter was turned into a class and you just leaned into it a little bit, gave it more martial maneuvers instead of mystical abilities and stuff like that. This is this is basically we're basically looking at the hunter turned into its own class, which is just fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course. Um, next, Monster Slayer. Monster Slayer. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, something that I didn't get a chance to note, largely because my own uh, my own lack of attention, or I might have been stepped away at that time, was the fact that I did get to complain about the fact that you got no combat bonuses for the, your first iteration of uh, Studied Adversary. Once you get to adversarial focus, which is at six level, you get a plus one bonus on weapon attack rolls made against your studied adversaries, which finally leads into like there. I always had this complaint about the ranger, which was the fact that um, you they they would tell you, hey, you get all these different your character. The fluff of your character is the narrative fic the the fiction that we're trying to fulfill. The fantasy is you are better when you're facing these foes. And one of the ways in which they listed that you were better was hunting and, like, killing these enemies, right? But then they f didn't fulfill in that fiction because they, you would get no combat bonuses. And one of the cool elements of the Revised Ranger was they finally gave you combat bonuses. These designers, the level-up designers, looked at that and said, oh, well, they don't fulfill on the fantasy of being better at fighting your studied adversary. So we're going to remove the note about being better at fighting. It's like, no, 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 that's the wrong solution to that problem there. You should make me, you should, you could just give me the damage bonus. Just come on. <laughs> that was not the right solution to that. Like, oh, you know what? I'm not sure if I like the, um, I think it would be cooler if this, uh, meal was i think it'd be cool if these chicken wings were spicier and the waiter goes oh my apologies and they just take away the plate of chicken wings like i wanted something spicy to satiate my hunger and they so then they say my apologies and then they take away the entire plate that you were just eating <laughs> it's like wait a minute <laughs> you have chosen you have technically solved the problem yes you have also done it in the most dissatisfying fashion possible and i really wish you had just left me alone actually now that i think about it um 
And that's where I come to the Monster Slayer. Is I don't know if they could properly execute on that uh, issue, given their prior solutions to all these other factions. On the other hand, they could go in the complete opposite direction from their approach to the base class and say, well, the Monster Slayer is where we're going to lean into all the different ways in which you could tackle your studied adversary. And maybe we even have specific abilities, much as we've gone over earlier, might give an approach to that in Lords of Brachus, uh, the Hunter's Rights and stuff like that. This is where we're going to lean into uh, how good you are at killing these individual creatures, and this is how cool you're going to be, etc., etc. Um, so, thumbs in the middle is my conclusion. Normally I open it with that, but for, for the Monster Hunter, I had to I had to go through the process first be, before I could come up. I had to go through the explanation for my decision first before I could come up with the decision. I had to had to strike that and reverse it. Yeah. Um person personally I did, I didn't I never hated Monster Monster Slayer, but um it all but I always kept coming to I always kept asking myself why would I? Why would I pick this when I can go? When I can do a whole lot more stuff with Hunter, right? It never made you really feel like a monster hunter. They just—I think they usually just gave you additional bonus. They gave, they gave you like additional bonus action, which was like Hunter's Mark, but worse. So it wasn't enough to like just it. I it, it kind of cut you out of using two weapon fighting because it used your bonus action. And you had to refresh it every single round. Yeah. Uh, which was another problem with Horizon Walker, as I remember. And and with Monster Hunter, you would learn things like uh, maybe not hit points, but definitely like resistances, vulnerabilities, and immunities. I think it gave you that info. But besides that, it was like, no, really. Also, do more. Allow me, allow me to be the pedantic motherfucker in the room and point and point out that we keep we keep miscalling Monster Slayer, Monster Hunter. Um. <laughs> Um, next, Swarm Keeper. Ooh, uh, okay, so this is, this is the fun part, because I am using the rebuilt Ranger iteration of the Swarm Keeper. Um, which is to say I'm basically using the rebuilt Ranger base class and then pasting, uh, Swarm Keeper features on top of it. I really love the Swarm Keeper. It's great multi-class fodder, it has a ton of cool abilities. Uh, lead, which function off of a singular mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who are not familiar, I'm going to read it to you now because it's it's worth it. Uh, the swarm keeper gets this thing called a gathered swarm, and what it goes down to it's it's like you know it could be pixies, birds, or insects, or twig blights, even that kind of just like hover around. And here's the deal: once on each of your turns, you could cause the swarm to assist you in one of the following ways. Immediately after you hit a creature with an attack. So it's basically an on-hit feature. First, uh, the attack's target takes 1d6 piercing damage from the swarm. You get a little bit of damage boost. Uh, a third, and I did skip a number intentionally, you are moved by the swarm 5 feet horizontally in the direction of your choice. That's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Two, I saved the best for last, which is why I have not gone in the classic chronological order. The attack's target must succeed on a strength saving throw against your spell DC or be moved by the swarm up to 15 feet horizontally in a direction of your choice. And you can imagine all the combinations I came up with, particularly when it came to spike growth and wall of things. Yep. The cheese grater build has been a great source of pleasure both for me and my friends at the table <laughs> the rest of these months I've been uh, using it. Mm -hmm. Which is why I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Because this is yet another mystical ability, which actually does not depend on the on the general spell casting system. It'd be cool if it had spell casting attached to it. I really wish it had spell casting attached to it. But again, this is one of those things where like they can they can get away with it. They can get away with it. I wish I had my spells. I want to get my um my hail, whatever the fifth level version of Hail of Thorns is. You know, for the third level version of Hail of Thorns, I'm going to get Lightning Arrow. I want those cool spells. I think they're cool. I want them. Give them to me. But, um, it, there's going to be enough synergy between the Mystics and 
between the mystical thematic mechanics mm -hmm. and the mechanics that they have present. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And also, it'd be really harm to screw up Swarm Keeper. Just based on the, the swarm, that the gathered swarm that you get. That's just too cool. <laughs> That's right. too cool to screw up. I have two I have two that I have two that are unearthed arcana fodder. Um, Ooh. The first one is Drake Warden. Okay. Um this is another See this this I'm gonna give this one a thumbs down because it suffers from two problems. One, it's a beast it's a companion focused feature. And as we've established, the level up folks are apparently intent on trolling their player base from what we've seen so far. Uh, and that might, the level, it, level up folks, if you're listening to this, I understand hearing that in the moment might seem unfair. Uh, this is my first impression of you guys doing companion features. And it was not good. To the extent that it almost appeared intentionally not good. And that should tell you something about that mechanic. But if you want a more detailed description of that mechanic, go back to my first impression of it. Uh, <laughs> the other the other problem is the mystical aspect where the Drake Warden, I feel, would definitely benefit from more spells and would benefit from more magical abilities that specifically use the spellcasting system. And this, the level up Platos does not have that. So, I gotta give it a thumbs down. It might technically be compatible, but it's not gonna be good. Thumbs down. Alright. Um, actually, actually I, I, I have to correct myself because the... the um, because when I, was go when I was going over when I was going over that, I realized wait, one of the UAs I already, I already kind of did when I... Because I, bel I believe, I believe I did, I believe I did, co I believe we did cover Primeval Guardian. I'm Prime, sure. oh, oh, okay, so here's the thing. The Primeval, because there was a, there was something called Primal Beast. We did not cover the Primeval Guardian. All right, let's go, let's go into that one. The Primeval Guardian, if I'm recalling correctly was where you would get, like, you would basically turn into a... I, I hope maybe you have it in front of you, but you would sort of turn into, like, a tree person. <laughs> You'd sort of turn into a tree and have... Uh, be able to root yourself into the ground, and, like, your weapon attacks would gain more more length, and you would get some sort of, like, passing healing, passive healing. It, it was cool. It was cool. That's another subclass that I think needs spells. I don't think that... I don't think that subclass feature needs maneuvers as much as it needs spells. Mm -hmm. I would like it to have both, but if it doesn't have spells, I feel I feel like it could have spells and not maneuvers, and it'll be fine. I don't think it could have maneuvers and not spells. It'd be fine still. I think it needs... Yeah. And I also... I don't want to get the class... I don't want to open up the level up playtest, which I think is... I, I think... I know I'm, like, crapping on this a lot, uh, perhaps more so than I do other features. It's just that I have a high standard for it. I think rangers have problems that should be studied, well studied and well known at this point. And you better get it right. You better not hit any of the pitfalls that any of the other rangers have done. Or you better be doing something completely different. Don't even remind me of the pitfalls that other rangers have fallen into. Okay? Don't. I'm holding it to a higher standard. And what I really don't want to see when I go into a more mystically focused or magically focused subclass is that this, instead of getting cool features that improve some other element, I just get like, uh, well, you could cast this specific spell without expending a spell slot once per short or long rest. I don't want to see that. And I feel like the Primeval Guardian would fall into that. So I don't want it. Mm -hmm. and also, just in case, just in case, because I know that there was one on the Thracana like that. There was also a very early on the Thracana, which focused on sort of replacing the ranger. Instead, of, you you would get 
either a dire wolf or a giant eagle or a shark. And this Underthrakana only went up to like level 10. This is like really early in 5th fifth, fifth edition's uh, life. And just in case anybody comes up in the comments and says, hey, you got that Underthrakana wrong, it was actually this other thing that I just mentioned. Uh, all the same actually applies for, for that. How convenient. Yep. Um, all of my criticism as well. Now, when it comes to the when it comes we um we can we didn't really go into into th into the uh, conclaves, so I think I think those are th I think those are things that are worth tackling. Um, how do you, where do you where do you land on the beast conclave on on this setup? The beast conclave based on the revised ranger, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. The revised ranger. <laughs> Still had. Hmm. I'll give it a thumbs up. Because provided that they don't. Or I'll give it a thumbs in the middle. It still had problems. Uh, there's still a big issue when only. Where having a companion is a, is a class feature. Or worse a subclass feature. Instead of just a general system that people can access or even if it's not like a huge system that people can access maybe it's a restricted maybe it's a, a restricted feature that still anybody from any class can like like you could be a fighter and get fey beast tamer in uh fourth edition if you're playing in chillmas valley you could be a wizard but you can take the animal tamer secondary class still restricted it's not a system that technically anybody can access it it like you can be any character and access it at any given time but it is still a choice in character creation that isn't restricted by your starting class or subclass right i, I, I hope that makes sense yeah so i still I, there's still this fundamental issue that it is going to have to engage in combat against which i've already made clear my lack of faith in these designers to attack that much as I much as I like them overall I think they they're making some very clear and incredibly disappointing missteps but the revised ranger beast bat the beast conclave was pretty well done given the issues it was fighting against and given that it was sufficiently buffered against those problems in its construction, I feel as if these designers won't be able to screw up too terribly either. All right. Um, Deep Stalker Conclave. Uh, same goes for the Underdark Whatever the other under Gloomstalker, I think it was. We already, um, we already covered Gloomstalker. Right. Well, that that's what I'm saying. It's basically the same goes. It's thumbs up. Uh, that was the old one. That that's where the Gloomstalker sort of evolved from. And and I don't think it changed all that terribly. That that was one of the few things when the Revised Ranger came out. It had the three different archetypes: so the Hunter, the Beast Conclave, and the Gloomstalker. Which I think was pretty clever, because it gave you this third option that was like, okay, here's an example of how we're going to do extra attack only being a subclass feature when it comes to the ranger. And for the for some of these other subclasses, we're going to do some other special oh. things. I think it was uh, credit to the 5th edition designers for coming up with something before they kill, good before they killed him again. Um, I think so. Th thumbs up again. I don't think it's actually all that different from the Gloomstalker yeah. to begin with. I think most of the same features made it and pretty much as written. And last one is the Hunter Conclave. Uh, ditto for the for the Hunter. This is basically... This class that we're looking at right now is basically the Hunter. Alright. I'd, I'd, I'd say that the overall, thi the overall thing that we seem to be going with is... 
there seem there seems to be a pattern with the with the attempts to try and fix the ranger in one form or another that it's always um one step forward two steps back or <laughs> um tr um addressing an issue by t by taking something by taking something away like the um spice the spicy chicken wing analogy you used earlier um, yeah a just a case of um pe of people not would you say would you say it's a case of peop of of people not knowing when when's the right time to back off with fixes or um or some or something else i it it could be in a roundabout sense insofar as anytime that somebody comes up with something that might seem too people seem to be very nervous about rangers getting too cool and getting too powerful. And I think after fifth edition, five editions, I almost said five editions of it. Actually, in first, in one AD, AD and D, those rangers are actually, if you're playing rules as written, which I know not a lot of people do, even though they should, uh, the rangers are pretty, are pretty badass given the number of modes of play they can span, especially the followers that they can attract. There's, there's some perhaps unexpected, they're good at exploration, and there are some un perhaps unexpected tie-ins to domain level play uh, that they have access to. That if you're using if you're using literally the whole battery battery of rules, uh, rangers are good. I don't, in I, that light, rangers are good. I already I already covered this, and the fact that ranger down is ended up ended up becoming a running gag did did not did not exactly help. Um, right. No, I am saying AD and D first edition played rules as written, which is not a combat focused game. It's an exploration focused game. But people's most common edits to that game turned it into a combat focused game. Mm. No, they no. Sorry, you can't get away from that one. Combat is way too lethal for it to be a combat focused game. I I don't know about that. But I, I do. I am, I'm go. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm. Go, I'm simply going to go agree to disagree and move and move right along. Um, well, let, let me put it this way. Let me put it before we move I said. Between the two of us, who knows more people who play A D and D like with total fidelity to the rules? Did you not hear what I just said? I am moving right the hell along uh -huh. before we quag before we quagmire this any further. Rails. That's fair. I'm just sitting here watching the world burn, and it is magnificent. In a, in any case, it's a matter of like people people being afraid, people being way too afraid of the um. There is silly and stupid. Re, there uh, is a tra there has been a tradition problem, and this is and this is not. And I know I know some people have said that this is a problem that that cropped up in recent years. No, this. Tradition, this um tradition problem, has been going on for a while. It's more or less it's more or less been grandfathered in for years, and right. the, and the fact that and the fact that I see so many um OSR types even argue about interpretation with 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 um with with various OSR games or even the or even the source material only seems to ha only seems to hamper hamper the um point across. But, I but that's something that that's something that I tackled over a year ago. When it and when it comes to the, when it comes to this fear of the of the ranger being too interesting, what I end up falling what I end up being reminded of is, and I and I've brought this up before when when there was the when there was the whole shitstorm about um, Book of Nine Swords, and how it and how it was. Take and how it was taking away from the casting classes. Book of Weeaboo fighting magic. In reality, it what in reality it wasn't. <laughs> and, I'm still gonna call it that just because of the meme. Yeah, and the and the, I mean, we discussed how spells had like these had the domain of long term effects and stuff like that, and introducing maneuvers and fighting styles which had an, a really immediate and punchy effect was perfectly. Was technically speaking the fighter's domain, you know, 
that that's what swinging your sword is. And if swinging your sword happens to knock somebody on their fe- off their feet, that's still within their purview. I'm I'm not dis- I'm not disagree. I'm simply I'm simply no. I'm saying you, like we have we have had that discussion yeah. before. Like we've come to that conclusion before. Now, the re- the reason the reason why br- the reason why I'm bringing that up is I could I could see people f- f- I could see people um being afraid to make the to make the hunter too go- too good because they- because the diehards from other classes might get pissy. I'm fairly I'm fairly certain there's already a conclave of people who only play wiz who only play um, wizards who are still butt mad about the fact that they lost out on meta magic. There's a conclave of people who only play wizards who are still butt mad about the fact that they're wizards in real life. <laughs> um. Yeah. Got him. But what I see, what I see, what I see out of this is that the I think the the worst thing that we've had to say when it comes to the ranger in this case is now I knew you I know you have that whole hang up about about the spell thing I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not so I'm not so inclined I'm not saying that it should I'm not saying that it, sh- it should or shouldn't I'm 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 simply saying I'd prefer look. This is this is me just this is me just trying to segue into how much I pref- how much I prefer the Ranger in Thirteenth Age, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, when it comes to the when it comes to the when it comes to the Ranger in um in Level Up, I think the main problems that we had with a lot of it is some of the abilities definitely need a rewrite. Um. And some of them just come off as blat as blatant trolling for people who want to do the whole companion thing, or for for other character. But yeah, that's certainly the best example. Mm-hmm. Something I was going to bring up regarding spells, and thank you for the thank you for the lead up, is you could have made an argument when looking at giving this class a first pass at a first glance that by eliminating the spell list. They were freeing themselves to make the ranger cool in their own right, and gave them give them features that spells were meant to take the meant to give them in the first place. And by taking out the spell list, they would be able to just simply focus on making them the coolest martial characters that they could, making them come into their own. And and just letting them be cool because they weren't worried about this some negative interaction with the spell list and could include a few spells here or there, but they were only going to be first or second level. So the chances of them the chances of them producing any really negative inter- number interactions were were rare and likely to be edge cases, right? But as we can see, they still screwed up in that way. Like they still screwed up. With the companion characters, which we've we've gone over the the different problems with tackling companion characters, they still screwed up with some of the exploration acts where they had pointlessly stupid additional resource timers to where these not only was this thing restricted to begin with, but now it's only once per long rest and stuff like that. Basically, like clearly, removing the spell list did not allow them to take the interesting features and let you use them to their maximum potential within the context within the proper context of a game of a, of a session at the table they still turn back to those same resource timers they still turn back to those same restrictions and arbitrary limits and if you're going to do that i would like a choice in whether or not i'm using that whether i'm going to be asking a plant for help or summoning an animal companion, I would like to be able to make that choice on my own with the spell slot. If you're going to introduce that arbitrary, uh, mm-hmm. that arbi- the sets of arbitrary limitations, because at the very least, it's more true to the source material, more familiar. Now, so that's that that that's a serious point of contention that they need to examine mm-hmm. closely. They did not ex- escape that problem as nearly as well as they thought they would. I think is, I think it's one of those where the, where they have to choose between um between whether or not they 
between being a advanced being a advanced 5e and being a fi and being a f if well let's be honest if they end up fixing that problem they're probably going to end up pissing off wiz wizards and th and they're going to have some questions I can only hope so um if the the more failed uh the more pissed off paralegals that sent back into hiding with their tails tucked between their legs the better I'm still waiting on them to send me. Uh, I wouldn't get famous enough for them to send me a cease and desist with some of my products and say like, hey, "So I like, nope, nope, sorry, this isn't covered in the OGL." I keep trying to piss them off, but they won't. They haven't called yet. Maybe they're buddy don't with think the snap box. Sorry, go ahead, Zan. I was saying maybe they just don't think you're worth it. I, see, that's the most disappointing thing of all. That be that tells me I need to try hard. Give it time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Fair. They'll only come after you with a C and D once you start making enough money. But that's see, see that's on its way. Yeah, but that's with, on it. With that, with that said, um, that sh I think that should wrap it up for this very long edition of um of the Valley of the Judged. Next week we'll be doing it. We'll be doing another class that um is um is probably going to result in a lot of, and I mean a lot of bad jokes on our part. Eh. And I will eh. I will sim I will simply I will simply end end it with this. What is best in life? <laughs> That's your clue uh. for next week. No. Uh -oh. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank everyone for for taking the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>